Hey guys, if you want to see the full video and more clips and behind the scenes footage, make sure you check out youtube.com slash brilliant idiots pod. That's youtube.com slash brilliant idiots pod. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Peace. It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And uh, this week's show is brought to you by Blue E Cigs. What you know about Blue E Cigs, Schultz? Man, let me tell you this. First of all, a little warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, not for sale to minors. Satisfying yet simple, no fuss with refilling liquids. Just choose from a range of flavors. Pop in liquid pot, and my blue goes with you all day. Okay, find my blue in a store near you or order online, myblue.com. Website is restricted to 21 plus. And for all our uh, unemployed listeners... I want to tell you about NBA 2K20. All right? <laughs> Unemployed people are beast on these video games. All mm. right? But listen, NBA 2K20 is not just a game. All right? This is the place the game goes to learn. All right? Next level graphics, gameplay, player control, and customization. NBA 2K20 continues to redefine what's possible in sport gaming. Not going to lie. get a little jealous when I see people, you know, post their little NBA 2K20 players and it's mm. them. And I'm like... Did they do this himself or did somebody reach out to like, you know, make put them in the game? I don't know. But uh, you know, it's it's immersive open world neighborhood. 2K20 is a platform for players to come together and create what's next in culture. Play NBA 2K20 today. NBA 2K20, welcome to the next. And thank you for advertising on the Brilliant Idiots. Because if there's one thing NBA 2K20 don't have to do is advertise any goddamn. That's way. fact. That shit is the Popeye's chicken sandwich of video games. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm telling you right now. We got any church announcements to show? Uh, yo, Australia, we're coming next week. Matter of fact, let me get those up. Do you have any? I can get these up right now. Yeah, I'm gonna be in uh, Milwaukee today. Uh, oh shit! Today I'm gonna be in Milwaukee. Um, I'll oh, be at the Turner Hall man. Ballroom. How long are you in Milwaukee? I'm literally only there for a few hours. Excellent food in Milwaukee. Oh, I love Milwaukee. That's my Milwaukee spot. Milwaukee is a dope city, Yes, man. I'm going to be at the Minority Health Film Festival uh, discussing my favorite thing to discuss, which is mental health. So uh, pull up on me, Turner Hall Ballroom. Doors open at 11.30 a.m. 12 p.m. is an open panel discussion. 1 p.m. is a conversation with me. That is today at the Turner Hall Ballroom. So hopefully we get this out in a timely manner. Question. Um, when you do these talks in front of, in front of crowds. I get anxiety. Yeah, I was going to ask. Like, yeah. are you, do you get nervous before? Absolutely. You know what's so crazy? Because, like, <laughs> when you write a book, right? Yeah. You just put it out to the world. People read it. It is what it is. Yeah. And it's a book that is about your anxiety and being a little depressing and PTSD and yeah, issues yeah. with your father, whatever, whatever vulnerable stuff. Now you got to sit in front of people yeah. and talk about it. Yeah. And every time I do it, no matter where I do it at, it always feels like I'm in therapy and I literally feel like I'm up there butt naked, just stepping out the shower, huh. shrinkage, and I don't want nobody to see me, including my wife, every and, single time. And and did you feel that way when we would do Idiots Live? No. So this is completely different now that like yes. the tough exterior is shit. Absolutely. There's idiots, no jokes. This is real. Yeah, it is. We just out there cutting the shit. We yeah. Fucking around, having a good time, like yeah. laughing, joking. This shit is like, oh shit. Yeah. It's re it, you really feel that vulnerable because I'm not comfortable talking about my anxiety right, 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 and right, right, depression right. and going to therapy in front of large crowds. Yet, okay. Which is so the irony of the whole situation. There's a... Uh, there's something that people have always asked me about, like like uh, the live performance. They're like, aren't you nervous? Like, what happens if, you know, you bomb or these types of things? And while I can get nerves in the live performance, I actually prefer it because I feel like there's some semblance of control. Mm. For example, some guy heckles me or some chick heckles me. I can react to that. Even Absolutely. if a joke doesn't go well, I can react to that. I find that, like, putting out a project like the special or, the, or a book is way more nerve-wracking and vulnerable because even though you control all the variables, uh, variables until you put it out, once it's out, yeah, 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 that it, doesn't give you more nerves than than well, like when you release a book and you're like, that's it, it's printed a million times, and that's the fuck the way it's gonna be. I'm glad you know that I get printed a million times. That's great. Uh, Yo, can we flex? Sorry, I'm throw that out there a little bit. Can we flex? But um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's like it's a different level of content. Like when you put something out there, you can look back. Like I think you're comfortable doing stand up. Yeah. So you know you control the environment. You fuck around. But when you're talking about something that's 
a little bit out of your comfort zone because yeah, yeah, these aren't yeah. things that you've been talking about publicly If I'm on some political years. show or some shit like yeah. that or even like yeah, yeah. talking about emotional shit, it's a different... Even the political shit don't scare me no more. I you love feel like on, you're well versed in it. When, yeah, and I mean, I love being on CNN and MSNBC and all these different networks because it's not even just about politics anymore. It's pop culture. Gotta That's think, gotta your think, outlet. Gotta think, yeah, gotta yeah, thank yeah, Obama yeah. and Trump for that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. they made uh, the political conversation uh, a, a pop culture conversation. Yeah. So everything intertwines. Like I was on Don Lemon this week and we was talking about. I saw you with your arm over. That's my guy. Like y'all you know in the Hamptons? Yeah. Did he ask you if it smelled like anything? Nah, nah. Damn, bro. We, but we were talking about Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that came out of a conversation of me saying people don't understand nuance anymore. Right. Because we were talking about Trump. And right. that came from Trump and Chrissy Teigen going at it. Because Trump was like, I want some motherfucking credit for this first step back. Yeah. Because y'all not giving it to me. And I'm like, he does deserve credit. Yeah. He's the president. Yeah. He passed the bill. Like, yeah. 7,000 people got released from prisons this year. Majority yeah. of them black. Yeah. So why wouldn't you give Trump some credit for that? Like, like I, I'm not I'm not that biased or I, I don't I don't hate Trump that much to not tell the truth. I want right. to be objective at all times. Right. So me saying that and saying people don't understand nuance anymore led into, you know, Don saying, well, you know, you say people don't understand nuance. So did you see Sticks and Stones special? And so that was a whole different conversation, but it's all politics. It's all pop culture. Even Dave's special is, is, is opening up conversations about, you know, uh, where we are as a society. Right. So it just all makes sense. It's all intertwined nowadays. Yeah. So I don't even feel, I don't feel off when I'm, I, I used to see you on that show. What was that show you used to do? Uh, Red Eye. Red Eye. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. It seemed like you was in your element. Yeah, because it was like, it was a new show, but it was specifically geared towards like being funny. Like, I think mm. they took on pop culture topics and they were asking me for a funny take. I didn't have to, like, inform people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. had, they had, it was crazy. They used to have, like, that guy, John Bolton, who was the uh, national security guy that Trump just fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he used to come on all the time. Did and he, he get fired or did he resign? I saw a, resi a resignation letter. Oh, I, my understanding was... Just, yeah, I thought Trump said he Trump fired Trump act like he fires everybody. Trump's yeah, yeah, like the yeah. guy who gets broken up with, and I was like, nah, I told that bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Resign, and then Trump said, let me think about it. And then, and fired. then fired him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's great. Yo, that's how y'all got to do your girlfriends, bro. Don't get broken up with. Yeah, let's, let me think about us, us not being together. <laughs> yeah. Then you break up with her on Instagram. <laughs> Give me a day. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, listen, yeah, I mean, that, that's the only time I do feel anxiety is when I'm having those uncomfortable conversations about yeah. anxiety. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. I don't want nobody to look at me at, I don't want nobody to look at me at, at a, as an expert when it comes to anything. Like I always say, I'm just a human being who got some experiences and I share my experiences. Even on those political shows, I'm just giving my opinion. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, of course you state some facts, you know, when you're dealing with certain things, but I'm just giving my opinion. Yeah. Me saying... You know, Trump should get credit for the first step act is my opinion, but I would I would hope that's a fact. Yeah. That's an honest statement. He is the president. Like and I like going on there as like a not necessarily an expert, but as like a pundit when it comes to pop culture. Like one of the things that I had to kind of learn is that like when I go on these shows, it's like I'm the comedian on this show. I'm not no fucking truth teller. I'm not this like expert. <laughs> you are though. No, no, no. But I, my lens to tell truth is comedy. Comedy. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And and I feel like once comics or a lot of people, once they take this responsibility of being like this this moral virtue signal type of person, I think that's when you lose everybody. Absolutely. Especially you lose your comedy, right? Because all of a sudden you're making judgments on people on this serious show and then you want to tell this silly joke about women. They're like, how could you say that joke about women? Or how could you say that joke about uh, illegal immigrants when yeah. you're over here trying to be this pious person? So for me creating a little bit of separation between that like I like being the comedian I like the freedom of that you know what I mean I'm not trying to be anything different I just like that's, being that's me. for me Say I, wanna, I, just, I just like being me don't label me with any of these social constructs right okay I'm just me yeah alright I don't have any identity of nothing I just want to. I just want to go on here and motherfucking perform. That's right. it. And I don't even want to say perform because even performing sound like you, you know, pretending to do something. I just like to go up here and have real, honest conversation like we would have right. anywhere else. You ask me a question, I'm gonna tell you how I feel about it. Right. I'm not pandering to no audience. I'm not on no one side. You ask me how I feel about something, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Donald, yeah. Does yeah. Donald Trump deserve credit for the first step back? Yes. Hundred percent. Man. Yeah, like it's not, I guess yeah. not even. Like, I why? think everybody finds their tool to get their like truth out. 
But you start looking, I'm gonna tell you when you start looking stupid though. It's when you use a different tool. When you start using a different tool and you're not really being truthful. You're not being authentic because it's not you. You're being truthful based off what you think public perception is gonna be, especially in this era because we can all go to our phones immediately and get that validation. I don't do that shit. When I go do this CNN, MSNBC, I don't even look at that shit. Dude, you know what I think about sometimes? It's like, like, there's certain comics, right, that they'll end up like going to stump for a president, right? And I, or like even a politician or some somebody. And um, I see them stumping and they're effective. I think even Chappelle did it. Like they're effective, but Chappelle stumps for his cousin all the time. Ben, ben, jealous. ben yeah, Ben Jealous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's, it's kind of effective, but it would be 10 times more effective if you just wrote a hilarious bit that showed why. He was great for that job. Well, that's because every uh, politician now, and that's what the Democrats are fucking up, they need pop culture angles, baby. Sure, but it's also, that's the most organic form of you. That's the most authentic form yeah, of you. Yeah, like, yeah. seeing Chappelle be very serious about something and having no punchline or whatever, you're almost like, uh... What, 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 yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, here? Like, there are certain yeah. people who that's their that's their lane is being serious and saying how it is, et cetera, and you expect that from them. But like, use your means of messaging to get use the your tool. Out. Yeah, absolutely. use your fucking tool. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think like, I think that was a mistake I definitely made earlier on. Is like, I saw other people speaking on things, and it was like, well, I must speak on them. Like that. It's like that's not how I get it done. That's when people didn't even know you as a comedian. Exactly. That's we had to educate. Was, yeah, they thought you was the second coming of Ben Shapiro. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, who is this guy? He used to have, I th- he'd be like Ben Shapiro, Tommy Lauren, Andrew Schultz. I'm I'm like, nah, <laughs> bruh. Like, y'all kind of fucked up. But that, and that's on me too, is because I got to do the branding. Like, if I had all. Would you, me too? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> that's on me as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's on me. Like, I got to make sure I got to be aware of my own branding, which is like, I should have been had clips out. I should have been had things out showing that that's my sense of humor. And I'm taking on these hard topics. And I'm trying to find a funny angle in these things. And now, the reaction I get now when I say something wild is, oh, that's what he does. He's a comedian. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In a specific type. Like, I am going for that very difficult, tricky topic to make funny. And there is. It's high risk, high reward. It's like it's like that free solo. You ever see that documentary free solo about that guy who climbs the big ass mountain mm-hmm. with no ropes or nothing? No. I mean, it's insane. But the idea is like Is it about suicide? Clearly. N- nah. But like I mean, it's a totally different thing. I think he's a hundred percent serial killer, but this is where he went with it. Like yeah. he has the same makeup as a serial killer, yeah. but he found another outlet to like you. get that rush. That thrill, yeah. That thrill, right? And it's like um but just high stakes, high reward. Yeah. I like the idea of the topic being so dangerous that if it's bad, it's really bad. But if it's good, it's like, holy shit, yeah, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And you even see with Chappelle's special. It's like when you take some risks, motherfuckers are talking. And everybody, look, contrary to popular belief, oh, no, let me take that back. Contrary to the internet's popular belief, the world is receiving Dave Chappelle's special in an amazing way. So is my, the internet. This is, We're talking about 10 blogs that don't care about it. Yes. My, 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 and that was the whole thing with Don. And by mind you, Don is a part of the LGBT community. Mm-hmm. And Don was asking me about the special because he likes the special. Right. He was like, I thought it was funny. Yeah. My other uh, homegirl from MSNBC, I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she want me to, but older white woman, when she saw that I was coming up on CNN to talk about the special, she sent me this long email. She was like, Charlemagne, please don't go in on Dave. You know, I'm like, why would I go in on Dave? She was like, don't go in on Dave. What he's doing is necessary for the culture and we got to start having these uncomfortable conversations. That's the only way we're going to get to an understanding. This is an older White woman yeah. that works at MSNBC. Yo, <laughs> like, you know what's interesting? Did you see that clip that Comedy Central put out? Is maybe the first funny thing Comedy Central has put out in like I don't know years, ten Comedy years. Comedy Central still does funny. Uh, they don't, but this was actually oh, okay. funny. Blake Griffin was on uh, this roast and the roast of Alec Baldwin. I didn't like it. Now, the joke was Blake Griffin was t- uh, making a joke about Caitlyn Jenner who was on the dais. I didn't like it. Great content, terrible delivery. Let's uh, play it. We can play. You can play the clip. I didn't like the delivery, bro. That's fair. Regardless of whether you like the delivery or not, it's not even. I thought the joke was very good. For the, if we don't end up playing the joke, the joke's very simple. He's talking to Caitlyn Jenner. He's like, Caitlyn Jenner proves that uh, no one in your family likes white, white dick. dick. Hilarious. Great joke. Hilarious joke. But he could have. He, he has it. It was that little hesitation. Sure. Sure. Fair enough. I mean, he's know? not a comedian. Though, Listen, so I'm being too tough on. Anxiety plays tricks on you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah, if you know yeah, that yeah, at all. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So basically what happens is um, Caitlin, to her credit, really fucking laughed at the joke, stood up. And I thought that that was a great statement for like the trans community because it's like, hey, if we want to be treated like equals, 
We got to get some jokes. You got to get these jokes. You got to get these jokes. So, and look, it was a safe environment. Nobody wanted to beat her up. Context Nobody wanted matters. to do anything. Intention matters. Exactly. If if the joke is to hurt you, please believe there are way better ways to hurt someone than a joke. Please believe. And the trans community knows that more than anybody. Well, they know that more than anybody. Dude, saw me in middle school and high school. I've said yeah. some, <laughs> I've said, you got I've, some good ones. I was in the guidance counselor's office one time because a young man decided he wanted to cut his wrist. Really? Because of that goddamn Lenard. What'd you say? What was the joke? It, 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 him and his sister used to look alike. You know what I'm saying? They're related. Yeah, but they used to really look alike. You look like a turtle. Yeah, but I didn't look like them. Wait, like, wait they look bad. And, like, uh, they just looked alike. You know what I'm saying? And like they, and, and it, it wasn't even the fact of the jokes. It was the consistency of the jokes. One thing about me, I'm consistent. Right. So meaning we used to catch the bus together in the morning. Right. So six o'clock, I'm on you. Oh, wow. <laughs> then we're riding the bus, to, we're wow. riding the bus to school together. Yeah. I'm on you. Right. Then I'm seeing you in class and I'm seeing you between classes. I'm on you. Eventually you'll break. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. happens to the best of us. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe all this anxiety you have is karma. Might be, bro. You might, you might have earned it might, this. Yo, bro, it karma, might, dog. mother, it might be. But I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of that back in the day, when I think about it, it was me trying to keep people off me. Oh, of course. So you got you, you go to mechanism. school exactly. You got yeah. all the anxiety, and you're the one that's really insecure and shit. And you like, let me get them first. Yeah. Because it started with them clowning the shit out of me in sixth grade because I had glasses and the yeah. fanny packs hanging with all the white kids. So I would get clowned so much. I'm like, fuck it. If I can't beat them, join them. There we and go. Then my shit, my snaps just became better. You pulled the Pearl Harbor. That's, <laughs> what? <laughs> Explain that to me. I agree with it. They fired first. Oh, yes. They pulled up first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Preemptive strike. Preemptive strike. You yeah. preemptive struck. That's, that, no, that's exactly what it is. And then mm -hmm. when you realize, you know, you can make people laugh. And people like to be around and now you Japanese you're funny. people are some of the most anxious people I've ever met in my life. Really? <laughs> so maybe that's a problem. Don't strike first. That's, they probably got generational trauma from that shit. Maybe. Yeah. They also got a couple of nukes. No, they the not worried. Boys oh, yeah, yeah, came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they the even, boys pulled they, off. If they even think, <laughs> go. If they even think it's another Pearl Harbor, somebody's fingers gonna slip. All right. <laughs> okay. Don't even let them fucking play with you. But yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, let me tell you, uh, I got some little dates coming up. Uh, Australia, mm -hmm. Mador Tour, we're coming. All right, Perth. Some tickets left for Perth. Um, oh, no, Adelaide. Adelaide, we got a few tickets left for Adelaide. Perth, almost sold out. Few tickets left. Brisbane, first show sold out. We added a second show. Few tickets left for that. Uh, Sydney, first show sold out. Add a second show. Uh, Melbourne, first show sold out. Add a second show. And then third show sold out. So we, there are a few tickets left for that. And then Sydney again. I think that actually the last Sydney show is sold out. So go to theandrewshows.com right now. Go get your tickets. Um, we added new shows to the site, theandrewshows.com. You can get more Mad Door tickets. Uh, new York Town Hall sold out. I'm figuring out what I want to do with that. Do we add another show? Do we not add another show? We're a couple months out. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got to do that. And then uh, Boston. I think there might be a few tickets left for Boston. Um, but make sure you go get those right there. Seattle, almost sold out. Make sure to go to theindustrials.com, get all the tickets, get them early, man. I hate when I come into a market and you guys are like, yo, blah, 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 why don't you let us know? We couldn't get tickets. This, I'm letting you know now. Let's go get them tickets right now. Also, Brilliant Idiots YouTube. We got a YouTube page up, Brilliant Idiots uh, Pod. It's youtube.com slash Brilliant Idiots Pod. That's where the full episodes and the clips and everything, more behind the scenes footage, we're going to be putting it up on that YouTube page. Uh, so go follow that right there. Now, let's talk on um, Antonio Brown. Yes. Um, I I really don't know why. Well, let's start, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Antonio Brown forces himself out of Oakland. Right. Right. Um, I don't know why people are applauding that move. Like it's so funny Are to me. Are people applauding it? Oh yeah. Who's I mean, applauding so, well, it? All okay. the pundits are well, saying that he's well, the most selfish player well, they've ever seen. The loud minority on social media was uh, so behind AB because they think that it was some master plan that he concocted to get himself out of Oakland and find himself in New England. This is what you guys are and guys are essentially saying. Mm -hmm. He found a way to fuck up twenty one million dollars. Because A.B. was getting a guaranteed $30 million from Oakland. Right. He's getting guaranteed nine from New England. So he found a way to fuck up 20, $21 million. Right. Yes, he may be in a better situation. He'll probably win a Super Bowl. But that shouldn't be applauded. I'm not going to applaud the kind of behavior that causes you to lose that kind of money. So that assumption 
goes along with the idea that he won't make money next year. He'll I, listen. Thirty million guaranteed. Thirty-one years old, wide receiver. If you NFL. Got, so let me ask you this, right? You got twenty plus a million in a bank, right? Not not asking if you do have it. I'm uh-huh. saying like you know, but your pause was quite telling. But you have you have <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> tax brackets. <laughs> now I understand. You know, Trump is a pretty good guy getting those black people out of prison. Is he? <laughs> Lower those truth. taxes. I mean, keep on doing what you want to do. <laughs> That's the truth. I know, I'm teasing. <laughs> so. <laughs> so AB, I think, got 20 cash in the bank, right? Nah. That's what he said. He said he got 20 cash in the he bank. He said that? Yeah. So if you have 20 cash in the bank, right? Where did AB get $20 million from? I don't know. That's a good question. It was his first big contract. He was wanting that guaranteed money. I don't know. I thought he was, can, he can was, you look that up, Angelo? Where did he get $20 million from? Uh, what does AB have cash in the bank? He said it somewhere in some interview. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah. But he, maybe it was 10 But he still had a significant amount, just cash, millions in the bank, right? I mean, he's been doing, you know, what's it called? The advertisements for companies and like Because he left Pittsburgh because he wasn't getting that check. Fair, yeah. right? And he had just he had just run a muck in hit in Pittsburgh, and then it was done. So um, you have twenty million in a bank. Do you want to? What does it say? Net worth is around thirty million. Net worth is a lie, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's bullshit. But it doesn't matter. So basically, twenty million, right? All right. Let's say he has ten. Doesn't matter. You have ten million in the bank. You get a guaranteed nine million to play for a team that could go to the Super Bowl, or you get the guaranteed twenty one over X amount of years. It was thirty. Or guaranteed 30 over X amount of years for a team that won't go to the Super Bowl. So I think in his mind, he's going, well, why not just take this guaranteed nine this year? We go to the Super Bowl. If I don't win it, I could get another contract next year for another guaranteed nine. I'll make the guaranteed 30. Why why, why would you want to uh, basically work in the NFL on a year-to-year basis? I think... He's so wealthy that it doesn't matter to him. I don't know if he's that wealthy. I don't. I don't know the man's pockets. Right. But I don't. I, it, I don't this know. This is my assumption. My yeah, assumption yeah, yeah, yeah. is he's so wealthy it doesn't matter to him. And what matters to him now is he wants to get a ring. Imagine working for something your entire fucking life, and then being put in a position where you know that you're not going to go there. It would drive me crazy. So why not too. just? Why not just before you got um? Because he wanted to go to the Patriots initially, and they Pittsburgh didn't want to give him up. Yep. They were going to send a first round draft pick for AB. But why not say no? Why not? Whole lot until you get traded to a team you want to go. You want to go to. I think his whole thing was they're not going to trade me to a competitor. They're not going to trade me to a good team because they don't want to make a good team better and eventually have to go up against them. So why don't they just trade me to some bullshit? All right, fine. I'll go there. I'll say I'll accept it. I'll cause a, a ruckus. I'll get out of there. It's not the first time a Drew Rosenhaus client has done this, right? I mean, that's what Ter- Terrell Owens had, and Drew had him back in the day. Right. Same type of preseason antics. Terrell Owens so, fucked up though. Fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And like, now what's happening with AB? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, so once again, you you fucked over mm-hmm. thirty million dollars because mm-hmm. you had a, had a guaranteed 30 to get nine with some incentives to I think they probably say the contract would be up to worth, to worth up to 15 15 with incentives but we know in the NFL that means nothing no no incentives incentives work in the NFL especially if you're an AB yeah right? but you probably got to do a whole lot and and by the way in New England his workload ain't got it's not going to be crazy that's a fact you know what I'm saying so he's he not going to get all of those catches and all of those yards he might I doubt it though like we, they keep comparing this to Randy Moss I think this team receiving call is way more loaded than when the Patriots had Randy Moss. It is absurd. Yeah. I mean, they just dropped Demarius Thomas. Like, you got to be in an amazing position to drop Demarius Thomas. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. You know, a very good, he's like a tier two wide receiver. Yeah. And, but to have that core that you have, I mean, Josh Gordon looked unfucking real. Did you see him? Yes, but no, did he play? He didn't play Sunday. Yeah, he did. I didn't even see him. Yeah, I think he got two touchdowns. The first one, he leaps in the air, catches the ball with contact, and then stops on a dime. Yeah, he doesn't, see, dude. It was unreal. Game. He's just looking massive. I saw out the there. first half. I didn't he looks too game. big. But uh, well, my thing is this. Yeah. No disrespect to Josh Gordon and AB, but I'm just saying, if I'm a franchise, mm-hmm. do you really put all your eggs in those baskets? Two of them, like, come on. Like, you got one guy dealing with addiction. Right. You don't know what could happen with him. Right. And then you got AB who's just unpredictable as fuck. You don't know what could happen to him. Do you place all your bets on those two? You know what? I don't, uh, but I think they're the type of organization that, like, they believe in them so much. You talk about having money? Like, like, them motherfuckers is always playing with house money. Oh, they they not only play on the house money, they believe in themselves. They believe in the structure. Like, mm-hmm. they believe you could take a guy like Josh Gordon, right, and put him into that type of structure, and then all of a sudden, yeah, he'll right. be... 
And they're right. And they're fucking, they're the army, dude. Yeah. What does the army do? You could take a guy who is on drugs, you know, homeless, really struggling with mental health, and then you give him fucking structure in the army, the navy, the marines, whatever, and all of a sudden he can become a respectable, you know, citizen. Yeah. And it's like, I think the patriots truly believe in that. They Respect. truly believe that if you give these motherfuckers enough structure and no game bullshit, that they'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to produce. Now, will they have as much fun as another team? Absolutely not. Oh, listen, it's not going to be fun. You know what Gronk said on the shop? Gronk said everybody on the Patriots gets treated the same. Even Tom Even Brady. Tom fucking Brady. Yeah. Business all the motherfucking time. So I'm saying all I have to say. Okay, Antonio's on the Patriots. I still think it's foolish that he lost $21 million. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now you fast forward, he's been accused of rape. He's been accused of rape and like three different sexual assaults. Well, it's the same woman. Same woman. So it was a woman that was his trainer. Yeah. Uh, on one of the incidences, she said he came up behind her and jacked off. While she was watching a church video. Yeah. Pictures that show that they're fine, though. What do you mean? Pictures of what? Fine. With him jerking off? No. What do you no, mean? no, that they're like. What are you no, talking no. about? They're pictures that show them together again. Well, he was she was the trainer, and this, the second time they said uh, he pulled his dick out. I think first time pulled his dick out, second off, jerked off on her back, and third time he held her down. And, and no, they, no, the first time he said he kissed her without consent. Okay, kissed her without consent. Second time was the jerking off. Third time held her down and raped her. Wow. Now I said this yesterday. I said um, these allegations are. Let me see. What right. is that? These are just like videos of them together. Taylor, you can't go from us talking about him jerking off to just showing us videos of him line dancing <laughs> with her. Like, I thought you were about to show me some like really intriguing yeah. shit. By the way, that don't mean anything. Like, just because they got pictures together. Now, that's one of the reasons I say that nobody's going to care about this AB shit. Right. Number one, AB's hot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, simple minded people will say it's a conspiracy mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because right. of the way he left Oakland now he's with the Patriots uh, and if you read her allegations they're kind of easy for people to victim blame her mm. you know what I'm saying because they're going to say oh she was the trainer she came back three times right. he kissed her without consent he, she came back he jerked off around her he came back then he held it down and raped her then it'll be these videos that Taylor's showing me right now of them just together kicking it so it's gonna be e it's gonna be easy for social media that loud minority yeah. the victim blamer so they're not even gonna care about these allegations and it's not a criminal case either it's a civil case yeah like civil case means it's about money it's yeah, not about justice they, they're, not even, gonna, like, they're yeah. not even gonna care it's not so, gonna hurt them in any way shape or form the question is who do you think leaked this oh no this, is, this has been coming down the pipeline I knew this was coming down the pipeline. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just been coming down the pipeline. How'd you know? Because I know mad people who work at all these news organizations. And they were like, yo, we're waiting for the perfect time to drop the... No, they said uh, Antonio Brown has some allegations against him. It'll probably be out in the next couple weeks. The Raiders knew. Oakland knew. Like... Yeah, like that. We every, people knew that. If you're in the media, you know that shit was coming out of the pipeline. See, it's like this, right? You could be in a newsroom. You could be at radio. You see certain stories. Some people want to rush and break certain things. Some people are just like, oh, okay. They just wait and see what happens. Yeah. And then once it gets to that certain point, they're like, all right, you put it out now. She, she, just, just, the case is filed, you know? Because that's how it'll start. It'll start with, okay, I'm going to file a case against such and such. Yeah. Okay, so when she files it, it'll be news. Whose church sermon do you think they were watching? <laughs> sure. It would be very dope if it was Kirk Franklin, because Kirk Franklin had a problem with porn. <laughs> So it was like, it, it was that like energy. that sexual energy yeah, inside yeah, of him yeah, 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 induced yeah, yeah. the masturbation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's possible. Now, is that a compliment? Let's say that like you're By a By the pastor. way, if a guy wants to jerk off around you, he don't give a fuck what you're watching. Like, 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 we're looking at it from the perspective of that turn oh, Antonio I'm, Brown I'm on. I'm assuming that he jerked off on her by accident. I'm assuming he was whacking off to the sermon and just, it got on her. No. <laughs> he, he wouldn't give a fuck if she was watching sermons, Marvel movies, the, the BET, it did not matter. We're assuming, dude. It could have been a really great sermon. That's the other thing to remember, too. People are calling for his job. They're like, yo, he should be waived. I'm like, it's an accusation. It's a, listen to O.J. Simpson. He it's said an allegation. Allegation. Not listening to O.J. Simpson about this. You didn't hear what he said? No, what did he say? He said, he goes, guys, I just want to let you know, it's an accusation, not the truth. So. Well, broken clocks are right twice a day. Once again, <laughs> new hunt. Who would know more OJ than him? Can, O.J. can be a psychopathic murderer, but he can also be right in saying <laughs> accusations are just that, accusations. Like, that's the truth. Let things play the fuck out. Uh -huh. Now, if it was a criminal case, yeah. I'd be like, all right. 
Let's hear it out. No, yeah, but you might have to sit this one out. Right. Since you're playing this out in the court of law. Yeah. But and when, if everything works out, then you come back. Yeah. But if it's a civil case, yeah, you can play. Why Absolutely. Not? Why not? Innocent to proven guilty. It's not even about guilt in a civil case, is it? Oh, yes, it is. I mean, you could be considered yeah, yeah, yeah. guilty, but still, like, well, in cause, life. Because think about it. The lawyers could settle. And the lawyers could settle and say, fuck it. Uh... It's just, it's just cheaper to pay it instead of going back and forth to court. That don't mean he's guilty either. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And oftentimes, like, I mean, that's how they extort you, right? That is how you get extorted. It is cheaper to just pay someone than go through all these lawyer fees to take the the uh, emotional and physical toll of having this thing Going go back public. and forth to court. Even having it go public, having it go in the news. Like, that yeah. sucks. Imagine how uh, imagine how shitty it is right now. Let's say Antonio Brown hypothetically is innocent. Let's just say. I mean, he is until he's proven to it. But let's say he's yeah, innocent. Yeah. This is a huge emotional toll that you got to fucking carry around. People you got to play at every you week. Every single week. You go, in the home, you go to away games and they're like, let's go rape it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Isn't that let's and let's say you got twenty million in the bank and she's asking for a million? I completely understand how people go. Man, just give her the million. I don't want to deal with this shit. I'm be honest with you. If I'm innocent, I'm not paying shit. I, I'm not. That's you. I'll fight it. That's you. I yeah. get that. I'm just saying. I understand the people that don't. I understand the people yeah, that yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cost one million. I could end up losing ten. I could lose ten million. If you're someone who's like reputation is squeaky clean, like someone who relies on their reputation. For their livelihood? Yeah, you you going to settle that shit quick because you don't even want it out. Because it's not like back in the day where, you know, something could come out, people would let due process play out, Mm-mm. let things go into court of law. They make that and then decision. they get not guilty. Like, okay, he is really not guilty. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nowadays, shit gets played out in the court of public opinion. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers get ruined. Yeah. Period. But I just told y'all the reason this isn't going to affect Antonio Brown in no way, shape, or form. So you think he's good, 100%? A hundred. Patriots undefeated. Nah. What does it take a team? They play the Dallas Cowboys this year, baby. Uh, okay, sure. So, w- w- they what play is the it? Dallas Cowboys this yeah. year yeah. in Foxborough. Okay. okay, in the regular season, okay. baby. Okay, so uh, you see how good my Cowboys look? Say what? You see how good my Dallas Cowboys look? Mm. Nah, 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 I'm with Dak, Dak, baby. Dak looking like he's gonna get a lot of money. They fucked up not signing Dak because he was about to. I think they had agreed on like 32 million a year, and after that first game. That's coming up. Yes. That's coming and, and up. And other deals are being done. And now he can see, you know, what the bar mm-hmm. is. You know what I mean? Then you look at somebody like Julio Jones, who just got 64 million guaranteed mm-hmm. out of like a $67 million deal. Mm-hmm. And he's a fucking wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Julio Jones might have changed the way contracts are presented in the NFL forever. Why? Because it's mostly guaranteed? 97%. Like, he's not, he's not a quarterback. What did Cousins get? Oh, oh, for non-quarterback yeah. positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a wide receiver, 31 years old. Yeah, yeah. It's and you got deal. a 97% guaranteed contract? Yeah, Come it's on, a good man. Deal. You it's fucking a, won in life. I would never pay a uh, wide receiver ever, but yeah, it's a good deal. You wouldn't pay him shit? I don't. I think, I mean, I've said, I feel like I've said this a million times, but like wide receivers and running backs are the most overpaid positions in football. Until you get Randy Moss. How many rings he got? I mean, shit. He helped Brady goddamn break every fucking record in the book, though. Except... A ring. But you got to be on a team. Even, name, listen, even a great quarterback got to have a good team around. Name the last elite wide receiver to win a ring. The last elite wide receiver to win a ring. I don't know. Because they don't win them. But they win them on a good team. They don't win them. You do not need an elite wide receiver. It is a waste of money for someone who doesn't affect the game at all. They don't affect the game on defense, and their most effective game is if they catch the ball eight times. That is not someone I'm going to give a lot of my money to. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think football is a sport that you uh, you could ever look at individuals and say, individuals change games. Like it's a team effort all the exactly, way Exactly, right? So that you need to diversify those funds for the whole team. And if you put all that money in a player like an Odell Beckham Jr., mm-hmm. who truly cannot affect the game enough, he can affect the game on every single play. You know who affects the game on every single play? A defensive lineman, offensive, offensive lineman. lineman. Every single play. You know who affects the game every single play? A cornerback. You know who affects the game every single play? A quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, and to be honest, I wouldn't even dump too much money into quarterbacks, to be honest. But like running backs, dime a dozen, you can get them anywhere. Not running, quarterbacks. Quarterback, listen. Not phenomenal running backs either, bro. A phenomenal running back to mediocre running back doesn't matter. Because if you have a good offensive line 
and you have a decent offense, you can get yards with mm-hmm. them. But they're not going to carry the game. They're not going to make shit completely different. I just would never pay a running back or a wide receiver. And the reason I wouldn't is because I look at the teams that have won championships and they don't have elite running backs or wide receivers. Definitely not wide receiver. Wide receiver is the most useless position in football. That's true, though. Huh? Dallas Cowboys, baby. Who? The triangle back in the day. Dude, back in the day. Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, and Emmitt Smith. Sure. Now, let me ask you a question. What did the Dallas Cowboys have that revolutionized the sport? Offensive line. Man. Now, when you have a great offensive line, that means you have more time to throw. So, who gets to all of a sudden become elite? Yeah, so your wide receivers yeah, so and your running back. Yeah. Pay that offensive. Just do whatever the Patriots fucking do. It's no, like the, it's really not that hard. Well, the Dallas Cowboys are going to do it this year, goddamn it. But they not because you know what they did? They paid a running back tons of money. That's fine. And Patriots would never do that. They paid a court. They're going to pay a quarterback tons of money. That's fine. The, Tom Brady always takes offensive line is kicked the fuck up, and everything else is at a bargain. We gonna see everything else. Everything else is at a bar. We gonna see. They might not pay homie, uh, Who? our wide receiver, Who, uh, Amari, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. Yeah, they yeah. might not. And to be honest, Amari Cooper opened up your whole offense. You got Amari, and all of a sudden you had that deep threat. Motherfuckers had I think to start Zeke, respecting man. you. Not because they had Zeke before I think Zeke Amari. Opened up the offense. They had Zeke before Amari. Yeah. And then Amari came in, and all of a sudden it was like, oh shit. But I think Zeke makes it easier for for, for them to have a passing game. I think both, right? It's like yeah. before you had a deep threat, you could just stack the box because you knew you weren't going deep. And I also think that your uh, Akash brought this up on Flager and he was like, that that uh, Ga- Gallup, is that his name? Who's the other wide yeah, receiver? Gallup. He's a second year wide receiver. Yeah. And people forget, like, you're still a kid when you enter the NFL. Absolutely. A second year is a big difference. Absolutely. So now you're going to see him start to make strides. And the other X factors that's a, that are back, Jason Witten at tight end, yo, back. Yo, Jason Witten, and you got Randall Cobb, Cobb instead baby. of Cole Beasley. Like, yo, listen, don't get me wrong. Cowboys are nice. We are going to the Super Bowl. Man, come on with that, bro. Come on with it's that, It's happening this year, come bro. Come on with that, bro. Bro. Nah, you going to the Super Bowl I'm eventually. with Dak. Huh? It's happening this year, bro. Dak talk. <laughs> All right. It's happening this year. I'm telling you it's going down. Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Guaranteed. Zeke going to beat up somebody by accident on purpose? I don't know why Antonio Brown would want to go to the Patriots. It's going to be hard not to say cracker in that locker room. Dude, we were talking about this in flavor. Like, he went from, like... A cracker GM to the cracker organization, crackerist GM <laughs> and organization. It's it is the saltiest of crackers that he is now playing for. So you can't really hate playing for it's a cracker. All fun and games until Donald Trump tweets how much he likes the Patriots, Yo. <laughs> and you are the dog, and you are the ball of black Twitter. <laughs> now what you gonna do, Antonio? <laughs> Act like you Yo, don't see Antonio that? Brown and Donald Trump go to the same hairstylist. Man, stop for Antonio's man. mustache. <laughs> you know what? Antonio's mustache is the same color as Donald Trump's. It head. is. That is a fact. It is. What else we got? Man, what else going on? Um, I don't know why people are are, are, are are tripping off Kawhi Leonard because his sister killed somebody. Or allegedly is being charged with murder. Yeah. It was, I don't like that. I don't like when somebody in your family does same Same thing with Simone Biles. Mm-hmm. That shit got nothing to do with me. Right. And this shit not even a story. It's only a story because they say Kawhi Leonard's sister yeah. charged with X, Y, and Z. If that wasn't Kawhi Leonard's sister, it'd just be another woman in yeah. L.A. who killed somebody. Yeah. I, the, yeah. They tend to do that. They tend to like that gravitate towards you know the thing people care about. Like when anybody does anything... In Florida, they're like, Florida man. Well, Florida man is a celebrity. Think about that. We live in a celebrity-obsessed culture. Right. Florida man who doesn't really even exist is a celebrity. Because we expect... Because everybody can be a Florida man. Craziness from Florida. That's it. Because if it was like Georgia man, we might not watch. If it was like New New England man, we might not watch. Kentucky man's trying to come up. Kentucky man might. No, 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 no. Google Google Kentucky crazy stories. Kentucky man trying to come up. They got a meth thing. That was like the meth gators or some shit like that. It's the meth and I think it's the the fucking whiskey. Yeah, yeah, man. The meth and the whiskey is causing motherfuckers in Kentucky to wild the fuck out a little bit more. They trying to be on Florida's bumper just a little bit. That's a lot for your heart. Meth and whiskey, dude. I don't know. But I just I don't, don't like I, I just don't like when it. celebrity so when you attach celebrity to something it just automatically becomes a story. Yeah. And that shit is whack. It's the clickbait. What you see some stuff Kentucky? Yeah, they're trying to shoot shit. Exactly. Yeah. I'm telling you. You ain't paying attention to Kentucky, bro. Kentucky if Kentucky going to be the new Florida man in about a really? year. Really? Yes, this time next summer. Huh. This time fucking next summer. So what happens? So she allegedly shoots somebody. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you she, know, she didn't shoot somebody. Oh, she didn't shoot someone. They, uh, her and a man allegedly uh, robbed, I believe it was an elderly woman in the bathroom of a casino. Okay. And during the course of the robbery, I think the woman fell and- He hit her over, hit her over the head. Oh, they hit her over the head? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a robbery inside a casino. And I think she has a history of it. I think her, and I don't know if it was the exact same dude had done it before. Right. And Kawhi don't fuck with her. I don't right. Know about that, yeah. You don't. That's the problem with this whole- Family shit. Just because we share the same last name. Right. Doesn't mean that we in cahoots together. I may not have spoken to you in years. But when you go and do some dirt, all of a sudden it's Kawhi and his sister. Why is that a story? Like, I just feel like media outlets got to do better in not making that a story. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that, ha- that shit has nothing to do with Kawhi Leonard. If I'm Kawhi, I'm actually upset about that. Even though it's the truth, yeah. why is my name being used the motherfucking get you clicks. So what can we do about that? I have no idea. Somebody's Stop. gonna report that though. I mean, if they, I mean, I read the. But stories. why did I gotta say Kawhi Leonard's sister? Because they want you to read the article, and that's whack. Because now all of a sudden, but that's people the start... price of celebrity. I mean, that's the uh, price of getting paid a hundred million dollars to play basketball. Is it though? Yeah, maybe. Pretty much. Is it? Yeah. It might be. Do I gotta deal with that fuck shit? Yeah. yeah. You might. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that shit either, yo. It was, 50 Cent was on Breakfast Club and he said that. He said nobody has sympathy for winners. Yeah. And I understand where he's coming from, but nah. Just because I'm rich, just because I got some celebrity don't mean I got to deal with the fuck shit just because. Like, you're still human at the end of the day. I feel you, but yeah. what's it really worth to play basketball, right? What do you mean, what's it really worth? To play basketball, to play a game of basketball. Like, what's the actual value of that? I mean, what's the value of anything? Nothing. Yeah, so, if so the point basketball is, is no more intrinsically valuable than than like lifting boxes and putting them on the right. So what I'm saying is you the play reason basketball all the time. Bas- I, I've Have you played ever gotten thousands? I've never game? gotten a cent. No, no, no. To play no meaning the act of it, right? It, it's all made up. Like we just put the act. Of, like the fact that you get paid millions of dollars to do radio, mm-hmm. right? It's like that act is no different than picking up the boxes. It's just more people are interested in you talking than watching some guy put Home Depot boxes on a forklift. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no, no. But I what I'm what saying, saying is, basketball. The salaries are at such a astronomical level now, partially because of celebrity, partially yeah. because Kawhi is so well known, partially because when he says what it do, you have to filter. That's true. Here's no. the thing, yes, Charlotte. No. Sure 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 you have to filter no. this through the fact that Chris hates rich people. Okay, <laughs> even though he is kind of rich, he is kind of rich, but he hates rich people, and he's got that communist DNA in him where yeah. he wants us all to be the same. That's not what he said is not true, and I'm gonna tell you why it's not true. Yeah, being on that basketball court, they're not giving you a hundred million dollar contract because you're a fucking celebrity. No, you become a celebrity because you're yeah, on a basketball Yeah, but they're paying you because of your talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know mean, what I'm saying? There are way, very famous people that are not getting paid to play basketball. Stephen A. Smith said the realest shit. We had him on Breakfast Club. Stephen A. said he, he has a problem with people uh, becoming celebrities and getting all these endorsement deals just for being celebrity. He was like, what are you doing on the fucking field? He's talking about football players in particular. What are mm. you doing on the field? And he mm. was talking about Odell. Yeah. He's like, what has Odell done? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, if it wasn't for that catch against the Cowboys and his hair, we may not be talking about Odell Beckham in that light. So he's getting all these endorsement deals and stuff because he is a celebrity, but your celebrity should be based off your motherfucking skills on that football. Yeah, field. but he's also had like the most yards and the Has most he? like, I think some of like the most yards and touchdowns in the first three years of a career of any wide receiver or something like that. Like he's clearly proving he's a He hasn't won through. nothing. Though. He hasn't won shit. But yeah. then again, he's a wide receiver. They don't do anything. None of them do. Well, he's still going to get a I'm ring. Saying. None of them will get rings because they want too much money. And by getting too much money, you won't be able to have the other pieces that your team actually needs to get a ring. But it's a look, dude, it's a tricky fucking thing, man. It's like um, it's just like anything. Like we put this value like like freedom. I was thinking because I was in Russia last week. Right. And like I it really put in perspective how much we how much how arrogant we are about this idea of freedom. Like, we've completely invented this idea of freedom. Like, you deserve to be free. You believe it. You deserve to be free. You believe it. I deserve to be free. I believe that. Mm-hmm. We just invented freedom. That's a that's, a, that's an invented idea. Explain. Explain. Someone was just like, hey, once you're born, you deserve to be free to do whatever the fuck you want. And then other people are like, yeah, I think I do. See, when I think of freedom, I don't think of that. What do you think of? I think of bondage. I think of being enslaved and... You're free. I think of being in jail. Right. And now you're free. Like, right. Being free to do whatever you want to do. That's anybody can do that. Right. So well, there's historically, yeah, that's what Andrew's saying. 
historically, there isn't a precedent for that, right? Yeah, I'm, speaking, I'm speaking of actual bondage. You're talking about slavery, right? But there's yeah. different levels to freedom. Like, for example, in certain countries, you're not free to be gay, right? So that would be a limitation of freedom, yes. right? And in certain places in America, you're not free to be black. Right, that'd be now. You're free to walk around. I mean, you're you're free not to be black, but that's your own. You're risk. not in, in bondage, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. there are repercussions for sometimes being black in the wrong neighborhood, being black in the wrong yeah, yeah, situation. Absolutely, right, absolutely. so like there are there are effects on your freedom. Right, and so like, that, yeah. So when you say the freedom, that's the freedom that most people want. Right. They don't but, want to be oppressed, marginalized systemically. Exactly. Because you can't really do anything about random acts of racism. Of course not. Of course not. But you're talking about systemic acts. Yes. Right. But here's the crazy thing: we just invented this idea of freedom. You got to explain. Like, uh, I don't know how. This is an idiot hot take, by the way. So, so it's like, it's like. I know where you're getting at. Yeah, like, well, explain. It, Chris, somebody explain. And, and, and help me explain okay, it. But in, like, the, in the best version of America, when America's held up as this shining example, it's because we demanded free. freedom from Britain. Yeah. We demanded freedom to own property, to have guns, if you believe that's part of it, to yeah. self-determination. That's always been, and that was the the principle that the the nation was founded of and separated from Britain for. And that's always, in theory, been our biggest accomplishment. Because it's true. Mm -hmm. Throughout world history, people don't have freedom. Yes. On all sorts of different levels, whether it's straight up slavery to freedom women, of ideas, women Magic not being able to ideas. drive in Saudi yeah. Arabia yep. to you can't freedom have vote. Twitter in China. Yeah. You can only use yes. Chinese version, whatever of that. their fake version is. So there are all these different variations of it. Now, the other side of the coin is that's the principle America was founded on. Uh, are they living up to it? Maybe not. Uh, of course, Did of course. Did freedom work for Native Americans? No. Did freedom work for African Americans? No. You, but I, the principle yeah, is yeah. unique. I, again, the again, principle I'm not, is, I'm right. not trying to imply that we all have it. I'm just saying. And if you want to take it back a step further, they would say it's based on a democracy, thing or whatever. which goes back to ancient Greece, Greece, but they blah, blah, blah. had slaves but in But isn't there little subsidiaries of that even in America? Because say like you're in school, yeah. right? And in school, they got rules. They have regulations. Yeah. We've all left the class from where the day was over and you're like I'm free right. you know what I'm saying because yeah. you know you're no longer under that rule right, right. so there's there's different levels of it right mm -hmm. like you're not free to say whatever you want in class in school right well, you can but there's consequences but there's consequences yeah. right and um, and, and so, so, so I'm in, so I'm in Russia and I was you know, doing this festival out there and it was amazing uh, experience. It was truly cool culture experience. I'm talking to these two comics that were there who did this podcast and they were talking about this idea of, um, freedom that like is instilled in Americans. And they're like, here's the thing you got to understand ever since you're a kid and like forever in your country, you fight for this value of freedom, which is you deserve to be free. Right. right? And not only do you deserve to be free. Right. Other countries deserve to be free. Sure. And if they're not free, you'll go out there and you'll free them. As long and, as there's something in it for us. And then he goes, well, of course, of course. Right. But I'm just saying like in its, in right. its best, in looking at things in the best possible way, right? And he goes, we've never had this concept of freedom. I go, Wait, what do you mean? Because I thought freedom was ubiquitous, right? I thought every no. human being believed in oh, freedom. So the Russian is saying he's never had this concept so of freedom. He goes, so he, I don't understand why. So they go, they go, for our whole lives, they've been telling us, Believe in Russia. The state. Support Russia. Help Russia. Mother Russia. We are the best. Russia is the best. And right. we will always protect Russia. It's never... In America, it's always freedom. Then America. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. anytime America infringes on your freedom, we start to protest. Colin Kaepernick should be able to take a knee. Why? Because he's free well, the to take a knee. The Constitution says yes, that, Yes, because the value of America is this freedom thing the individual comes first. The individual and comes first. Not, not, not this state. America not thing. American is an, is an expression of that freedom thing. And it totally, it totally puts it in perspective for me because I was like, holy shit, I thought this was just how every human believed that they should be able to live. And then some places weren't able to live that way. Yeah, but, but there are people that grew up without even believing yeah. they deserve so it. So you're in a country where they never had that though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. So how, but how wild is that that like you and I, you grew up with this idea that you deserve freedom even though you were being restricted your freedom in many different circumstances because of color of your, your skin. But mm -hmm. even inside you, you were like, but they're wrong for restricting me because yeah. I deserve this thing. That realistically, I mean, we all made up. Yeah, I mean, listen, we... we <laughs> right? Isn't it nuts? I don't think we made it up. We didn't make it up. People we make have it up. wanted freedom. They just yeah. haven't had it. Right, right. But like... For everyone wants to be free instinctively. Right. But, listen, it's, you're, it's, but historically, it just hasn't happened. Both of you, well, you're, you're a white male. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, 
Chris is trans Asian. Right. So Sp- speaking of which, Hong Kong is an exact example of what you're talking about, right? There we go. That's why they're going Ham. so fucking hard because they got a taste of it. Yeah. And they know it's about they to go. They got a taste of freedom. And now they see yeah. it's about to go away. And you got 18, 19 year old, 20 year old kids who have grown up with iPhones and coach stores. I mean, mm-hmm. they Hong Kong is an Am- international city. Yep. It has everything that New York has and then some. And China's about to shut and it down. China's about to shut it down. Why are you, you shutting it down? Uh, because it's a threat. It's a threat to what their they have. Their freedom is a, a threat to the control. Western civilization is a threat to their way of life. Well, certainly democracy. And yeah. And I mean, they, I won't go too in the They weeds. remove all, like like China's uh, way to control their population is to remove all other influences. Like there's a reason they don't have religion out there. Right. right? And they've actually been like fucking like, ex- and I don't know about exterminating, but like putting Muslims in camps and shit yes, out there. Like, yes, yes. And it's because they want the government to have the only influential factor in people's lives. And religion is such a potent idea and like powerful idea in their lives. It could create separation. It but could make the Caribbean are like that. Like when we used to Dude, first, the whole world. When we used to first go to Anguilla, they didn't have fire come. All that shit was blocked. Yep. Did I ever tell you about the time that we tried to watch Moonlight in Anguilla? Oh. <laughs> and you got a knock on the door? <laughs> what you doing in we, we tried to watch Moonlight and it was like, this program is restricted in this region, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, hmm. And so it was me and my wife and it was Van and yeah. you know, and I'm like, what other gay movies do y'all know? Let's just the only one I can think of was Brokeback Mountain. So I look up Brokeback Mountain. This movie is restricted. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> so then Netflix starts this, you know, uh, recommending Recommend stuff. It, yeah. all, I mean, yeah, you go down a Netflix rabbit hole of gay movies. Jesus Christ, bottomless yeah. butthole. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so he started, So it's like, it's all of these movies in this gay genre, every single every one of them restricted. Blocked. Every single one. So, so it's one of those things where like, w- and were you surprised a little bit? No. Interesting. No. It, it, it didn't come to your, no. it didn't make you go, oh shit, like we live in a place where you can watch any of these things. I've, I've traveled enough. And, okay, you had an expectation. Yeah, and read enough to right. know America got it good. Son, <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy. Like, like, And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's perfect, and I know that there's tons of fucked up shit that's happening, but in terms of raw freedom, raw freedom, no place is close. How many times on this podcast? Close. And I, and I might I might even like update. Canada what, might be close. Dude, dude, Canada, you get arrested for a tweet. Canada, really? uh, a comic is was sued for $40,000 for a joke he made on stage. That's not freedom of speech. They don't even have freedom of speech in Canada. They have freedom of expression. Yeah. Because speech can be hateful and speech can be violent right. or whatever these nonsense and things are. And think about all the times we hear about, you know, and that's the other thing you heard for years. These different artists go to these different countries and get arrested for something they did on stage. Yeah, like, Alex. You know, NWA, you know, back in the day when it was at, it was right. like in Sacramento somewhere. Sure. I forgot when it was at, they got arrested because the police officer said, you can't come on this stage with this with this rhetoric. It's like, so it's like, I, I, I always understood that concept. Right. My, my biggest thing when it comes to freedom, it's not even about the rules somebody may have for their establishment or even for their, 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 their town or whatever. My biggest problem has always been the rules that are systemic based on my skin color, right. based on somebody's sexuality, right. based on somebody's gender. Cause those are things we can't control. Right. I can go in somebody's establishment and not motherfucking curse. Easy. If you ask me, you know what I'm saying? If you, you ask can't me not to not curse, be black. That's my, yeah. Yes. So that's, that's a different type of freedom liberation that hundred percent where that, minorities are seeking and and it and you should seek it and i'm but what i'm also saying is there are places in the world where like they don't even believe they can seek it the the idea isn't even there for them like the idea in and to be honest this is why in a lot of ways comedy is so potent and why it's i think taking over the world and that's my prediction stand up is because the joke offers this perfect little uh cloak protective cloak for a real idea, right? And if you're from a country that really, you know, censors what people can say, if you say something, but there's a nice little joke around it, you're like, oh, that's not too serious. It's well, like- Can in, they take a joke in China? If they, can well, they take a joke in you, Hong you Kong? Gotta, you gotta see Hong how Kong, far yeah. you can go with it. You gotta see how far over you can there, go with it. Over there, let those little penis jokes fly over there if you want <laughs> to and see what happens. <laughs> well, I mean, it would you just be regular sh- penis. You let them short jokes fly over there and see what the fuck happens. <laughs> there right? is, it w- it's just- Think it, about that. We have the freedom to make fun of other people son, from other countries in America. Think about this. You're not going over there with that shit. Th- no. Think about it. It was funny. When I was, in, when I was in Russia, I did a Putin joke. That was the first thing that I did. And I had a guy translating the joke. Yeah. And I said, I just start the bit. I was like, Putin. And- no, and I look at the translator, and he looks at me. He's like, 
you want both of us to get involved in this? Like, <laughs> y'all really want this to go down? Like, I'm not, I guess. <laughs> but it was, there was a little bit of a little pushback and I understand that. But this is what fucking happens, man. And this is what true freedom is. True freedom, like, think about how free we are. You can call the president, what did Chrissy Teigen call him? A pussy ass bitch? bitch? Now, now, listen, let's talk about that. (laughs) Call him a pussy ass bitch, bitch ass pussy. We don't know if that's going to fly. Because we don't know how petty our president is. We don't know how petty his administration is. And just because they don't do something publicly and overtly don't mean that they won't do something. We don't know when Chrissy Teigen might get on the next plane and get held up at the motherfucking airport everywhere she go. We don't know. Yeah, what, is like, what is her that background? What is her background? What is Chrissy Teigen's background? She's Asian. Like, what kind of Asian? Uh, I don't Thai. Know not a chance in the world she goes to Thailand and talks about their emperor like that. Not a fucking chance. And, and her em- and the emperor in Thailand, yeah, yeah, guaranteed, yeah. 10 times worse You know why? than Donald Trump. The emperor probably fucking cut her head off or cut her hand off. In whatever, a whatever. fucking heartbeat. But, 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 that, but by the yeah. way, that's what Trump wants. Trump wants to be an authoritarian figure in that way. Yes. I don't give a fuck with nobody. Yeah, though. I mean, the danger... I, I don't have. I didn't have a problem when people criticized Obama. I didn't agree with it, but like it's important that you can criticize the president. That's what democracy is about. Right. I think the danger isn't the Chrissy Teigen stuff. Like if you want to look at what's happened oh, recently, think, yeah. The danger is when he does the the storm pattern, changes it, won't admit that he's wrong, and then instructs the weather organization to lie on his behalf. That, oh, that's the yeah, real but then thing. it turns out that it was going fascism. Towards, uh, it was going towards Alabama, but but he can't reach out to them and say this is what you have to say, right? But CNN came out and said it is going towards All Alabama. Right, but it's that, he, he it's was that sort of yeah, he was right. But it, it didn't go to Alabama though. No, that's see, I, I saw the CNN report where it was like we believe it's going to cut across Florida, hit uh, whatever Tallahassee, these types of things in Alabama. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, but the the point is, yes, exactly. And that would be fascism where you have that kind of influence over the weather, the fucking weather right. channel. That's, these that's the dangerous thing. He's 100%. doing that now, though. Dude, dude, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And Trump I, told and I, Fox, I don't fuck with y'all no more. Y'all better straighten the fuck up. He did. All yeah. right. What he's doing with the media, I think, outside of the environment. Let's not is make the it a Trump thing. Shit. Let's not make this a Trump thing. Let, l- not to. Let's, I'm voting for him in 2020. Let's say what? Nothing. So. <laughs> 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 I'll vote for him in 2024. No, but it ties into he'll what you there. What things are going on? He'll still be there. Son, you saw yeah. the thing he posted on Instagram? What? He posted Trump 2024? Bro, I've told you. That shit got me a little I nervous, I told babe. y'all this already. That shit got me a little nervous. I've told that y'all this a front. million times. I got a little nervous Trump with that Trump is going nowhere. But what Trump got to understand nowhere. is America's, and this is the thing, and this is the thing that, and I don't want this to be about Trump because then it just gets into an argument and let's talk about freedom. That's way more interesting. But the, but what, what Trump doesn't understand is how much America loves freedom and values freedom. And if you infringe upon that freedom, and part of infringement upon that freedom is the freedom to elect a new president every, at most eight years, no matter what. And if you, and granted, yes, FDR had three terms or whatever, sure. But if you infringe upon that freedom, there are Americans that will be crazy enough to make sure that that's, that's what happen. I want to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. They not on. They not on the left. Let me the ask motherfuckers you. that are crazy enough to do that are on the right. Um, what was the guy that shot up that baseball game? What was baseball he on? Game. He's left. He was on the left. One out of. We shot up all those senators in the. What was the guy who shot up the thing in Ohio? Listen, he was on the this left. This is my question eh. to you. Let's, here's a scenario. Okay. Left got shooters too. They're just a, wrists a, are weak. I'm not eh. talking about shooters. There's a disputed election, right? Yeah. The next election, 2020. Yeah. Trump claims this. The other side claims don't that. Don't take my fucking talking points that I've been saying on this goddamn <laughs> podcast and on Breakfast Club for months, and nobody want to listen to me because I got a list. I've been saying it too. Listen. So here's the, here's the scenario. Here's the scenario. Been saying this. <laughs> All right, it's disputed. Trump's like, I'm not going. I don't want anywhere. to talk about Trump, guys. Listen, no, I'm just giving you a scenario. This, this is freedom. This is yeah, you're talking about infringing freedom. on freedom. This is Dude, infringing on freedom. I'm not talking about shooting. I'm not Chris talking don't about. Chris need to be free. Listen. All right, go on, go on, go on. By the way, yet another talking point I've said on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think you Americans got a little too much freedom, but continue, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my question is, if yeah. that scenario plays out, yeah. will it be Hong Kong? Nah. No, 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 no. People, I'm not talking about Hong Kong. Is Hong Kong is adorable. Like when I look at Hong Kong, they got their little masks on. They got their little laser pointers. And we'll it's like, no, we'll do that. We'll it's do a that. fun little laser we'll tech. We'll you gonna that. have you gonna we'll have a certain that. contingent of American that are gonna protest yeah, yeah. this way. No, no, no. Hong Kong Let is adorable finish. now. Let me it's finish. It's gonna Let me get finish. stomped Let out. Let me finish. Let me yeah. finish. Who's gonna stomp it out? China. Those, okay. those kids are all getting killed. Like they okay. storm an Area Fifty One type killed. Like they know who's who. This is the calm. Really? Oh yeah. Everybody's going down. What? They're all going down. What? What? China doesn't play this. 
It's not about really? China doesn't play this. It's no other country plays this. But we China live in, in this weird fucking bubble. How many people China got? Two billions. billions. You yeah. think that they can't lose a few hundred thousand? They've so you, lost a few hundred thousand throughout history. Every 50 to 100 years, they just run through a few hundred thousand just to let everybody know. So let me ask you a question. Why isn't America afraid of China then? Like, so, why, so, so, why, 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 like When it comes to the tariffs and all that shit. Like, we are. No, every time no, when, I, when I talk to people about that, like China would never Their survival is dependent on America. us. It's mutually assured destruction, right? They, they make shit, we buy shit, so everybody needs to be on the and same page. China place. historically is not great militarily. They tend to fall apart. So you don't, But you don't think they would ever attack America? No. It, it, there's no point. The only way they attack America is financially. Is if their survival is dependent on it. That's when wars happen. Wars don't happen over ideas. They happen, happen over survival. And so, so when you say they're going to stop out the Japanese, what do you mean? Not Japanese, Hong, the Hong Kong. Kong. Hong Kong, what do you mean? So Hong Kong is this little like island off of China, and it had its own... It had its kind of like own rights. I don't know how exactly we could relate it It was America. a British colony, so it was separate from mainland China in terms of policy. It was operating under British rules, which are very close to American rules. Democracy, courts, freedom of press, what have you. It was the most westernized place in, in that Asia. part of the world yeah. for a long time. Now it's probably Singapore, but Hong Kong was super westernized, right? You don't think so? No freedom in Singapore, man. No, no, meaning westernized in terms of culture. Like, you walk around Singapore, you feel like you're in, you know, sure, a but western. If you it's like chew gum, they're going to cane you. So I mean, that's an exaggeration. Chew gum in Singapore? No, you can. It's... oh. But this is, it's a different thing. Hong Whatever. Kong's the closest to a Western city in Asia. Let's say that. Or had been. Boom. Done. Right. And and China's like, nah, now you're part of China and you're going to be part of, you know, all of China. And now China's implementing this system where, like, they're ranking their citizens. So, like, based on loyalty to China. So that, like, everybody gets a a ranking. You can be a 10 out of 10 Chinese. The fuck is an episode of, of Black Mirror? Son, Yes. But you, <laughs> this, this is so, so. But this is what people this is what don't it's realize. Be like. This is the world, and 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 when you talk about like like us in America, we value life. Like we're like, oh my god, you know, uh, ten people stub their toe in Florida. We need to fix this street immediately. In Russia, twenty five million people died in World War Two. Just put that in perspective. Twenty five million people died in World War Two. They don't care these places. Mm. People are people. It means nothing. Dude, they don't mean anything. I don't think we mean nothing here. I think we mean something to each other. We, but I think to the American government, they don't give a but shit. But here's the thing. We believe we mean something. The government might be like, ah, oh, they don't really mean anything. But he, but we believe. But when you go to these places, yeah, 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 yeah. they're very but aware. I, yeah, I get it. They're very aware. That they're just a number. The, the government thinks they're just a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, That's, and it's blatant. It's like, we, when we were in Russia, we went to the KB, KGB building. You know the KGB? That like uh, secret service agency yeah, yeah, that would like, they don't fuck people and all up. that shit like that? So the oh, KGB... That, <laughs> that's that's in <laughs> London. That's oh, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. But like the KGB shit, that sh they had this big, just, just tall building. And the top floor of the KGB shit, there's no windows. You don't notice it when you watch. But then you look at it, and this guy pointed me out. He goes, you look at the top floor, you see something weird about that? And they go, no, no, what is it? And he goes, you see any windows? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. He goes, yeah, because that's not a floor. That's where they walk prisoners. Thousands of people have been murdered in that very building, and it's still operating to today. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. So when you talk about what we have here and what we're bitching about, about gender neutral bathrooms or if this fucking penguin is going to be they they have a, a, a new monopoly game where it's coming around where like uh women when they pass go they get 240 dollars to make up for the wage gap <laughs> this is a real thing in london right you now made that up. No, i swear to god in my life up. cnn posted i swear to god in my life cnn posted i swear go look that up I swear to god in my life women get 240 when they pass go and i, I tweet and then, listen Today, look at a monopoly, a new gender uh, wage gap monopoly, and then the the in London there's a uh, there's a gay penguin couple that adopted a little baby penguin, and the baby penguin that they're raising, they're raising as gender neutral. They're not saying what gender the pe a gay penguin, the gay penguin couple. There are two penguins that that are raising a little penguin in the, the fucking aquarium, son. This is true. Look, th this is what we care about in the West. This is what we're fighting for. As our gay as, penguins. You know why? And, yo, no, what you're saying is, yo, I'm gonna tell Motherfuckers you Motherfuckers are getting murked out here because yeah, they just want some free speech and we're oh, worried about gay penguins. <laughs> That's the problem Of course they're America, gay. They bro. locked up. That's the problem with America, man. What else are you going to do? <laughs> need to find a hole. One of the biggest problems of America and I think one of the reasons is that we can't ever get to that true sense of freedom, that true sense of liberation that 
so many marginalized communities want is because we focus on the most trivial aspects of every single thing. Meaning like we focus on the trivial aspects of racism. We focus on the trivial aspects of sexism. We focus on the mm. trivial aspects of somebody being so-called homophobic instead of the systemic aspects yes. of these things. You like there's actually policies and legislations being put in place that we could be motherfucking, you know, raising hell about, but we're not. You understand what I'm saying? Because you can't stop behavior, okay? You're, you're focused on Trump saying, go back to where you came from. Instead of the rule, the law, the law that, that sending motherfuckers to send your back ass to back. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm serious. It's, the, it's, it's wild, bro. Have you know, you know what it's like? like about this. This, is, this is a perfect example. It's like, it's like your girl, it's like your girl being like, listen, I'm not sucking your dick. It's like her saying that thing, right? But if every once in a while she's sucking your dick, who gives a fuck what she says? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're worried about more worried about the act, the set, the said action than the actual action. You make me sick. You, you okay? Me sick. We still married? Yes. <laughs> we you still married? Make me sick. I can't stand you. I can't stand you. But we still married? Yeah. That's all I'm yeah, trying to yeah, like, yeah, yeah. get over the words. These things are going to happen in your life. You're going to have people be mean to you. Absolutely. Listen, everybody that's been cut off driving has thought something racist or sexist about the person that cut them off. Every single person in this room. Who gives a fuck? Exactly. Who gives a fuck? As long as there's not a rule that says Asians and women can't drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get now, to yeah. the rule. Now, now, if there was a rule, that's and I don't, I, that was a good one. If it was, there's a rule, <laughs> if there's a rule that says people can't drive, then you fight against that fight rule. Fight the rule. You know what, what are you wasting your time for? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. We, we focus too much on trivial shit. And words as opposed to actual systemic things that are being implemented to fuck us over. So as long as we're focusing on the trivial bullshit, the systemic shit is just flying. That's that shit just stacking up, stacking up, getting worse and getting worse and getting worse and getting worse. Nothing changes. It's almost like a perfect distraction. Hey, I'll say some weird shit and then get this Trump real law. Is the master? It's a, it's a puppet thing. What is it? Magic the or whatever. Master yeah, yeah. of that shit. What was that? That week when he was going at the squad. He was appointing more federal judges. And nobody even noticed. Nobody even fucking noticed. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. even know it. You know what I'm saying? I got 194 federal judges. You don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Let's pay some bills because I got to pee. All right, guys. You know, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world today, but one way that you can take a moment, one way that you can have a meditative uh, time for yourself where you can reflect, and that's a nice... White Castle hamburger. Okay. White Castle is America's fast food hamburger chain, as well as the slider experts. Nobody in the world produces a better slider. Hands down. I cannot do it. Fast food, I dare you to try. I really dare you. Matter of fact, most places don't even try because they know. And now you can get them same one of a kind tastes when you pick up White Castle sliders from the grocery store. That's right. You can get them at the grocery store made with 100% beef patties on a bed of steam grilled onions. These have that same one of a kind taste that the White Castle has been serving in their restaurants for years. And whether you're a vegetarian or a meat eater, White Castle sliders come in a whole bunch of tasty varieties for just about anyone to enjoy. Feeling a little cheesy? Just try their cheese sliders. Looking to add a little spice to your life? Just have a taste of their jalapeno cheese sliders. One bite and you'll understand what the crave is all about. I don't play around. I love me my White Castle. I'm in there. It's the only place where you want burgers, right? It's the only place where you go in and order burgers. You're not getting a burger. You're ordering burgers because you love them that much. So from the castle or the grocery store, you can satisfy your crave anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com slash idiots to get $1 off the purchase of any four or six pack of White Castle sliders. I'm not even sure if that's the right exercise. It keeps hitting me in my nose. Listen, I agree with Antonio Brown when he said he needed to change these helmets. These helmets are absolutely ridiculous. Are you about to kick us out of here? Only if you can catch me. Oh. Guys, NFL season is back, okay? And you know where we're gonna go gamble? We're gonna go gamble at mybookie.com. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E dot com. All sorts of amazing things. They got this $100,000 handicapping tournament. Only costs $100 to get in. And that's right, you could win $100,000, okay? You want me to get out of here? Stiff arm, no. Okay? Myboogie.com. <laughs> 
It's got live in-game betting on every single NFL game, okay? And for you fantasy nerds out there, you can bet the over-under on fantasy points. I really gotta get a better helmet. Here's the reality, okay? They're gonna match your first deposit up to $1,000. Do you know what that even means? Do you know what that even means? That means you put $1,000 in, they match it. You're gonna gamble all that money. That's only at mybookie.com. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E.com. You want all that good stuff? You gotta use our promo code. That promo code is idiots. Mybookie.com, promo code idiots. <laughs> Here's an interesting question. Yes, sir. As we wait for Charlotte to get back, uh, Chris, I wonder if you thought about this at all. Do you think there's a there's a, a guy who uh, opens for me, does some work with us, uh, Mark Gagnon, always brings up this idea where he goes, how much longer do you think we'll be able to eat meat? Mm. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I knew that you'd thought about this. So, Charlotte, the question is, uh, how much longer do you think will be able to eat meat? My, my buddy, Mark, has a theory that they will make it illegal to consume meat at some point once we have a reasonable replacement like that uh, Beyond Burger Not type America, thing. America, because of that whole freedom thing. Like, now you fuck. getting it, right? Yeah, hey, they're not, they not going to have a, a ban meat. But, but Chris has a feeling that it will just be more efficient. Well, what is the idea? All right, so, you know, I, I uh, wrote a book about veganism with Russell Simmons. I spent a lot of time okay. studying it. Uh, I don't believe that veganism is the ultimate answer. I don't believe that eating a lot of soy is necessarily that much processed soy, specifically. Yeah, it's, it's not good, it's not good either. Having strokes, they say you, vegans, uh, vegans are, are to have a higher risk of strokes than vegans. Right. It's, it's all a myth, this whole vegan so thing. So I'm saying that just to preface what I'm about yeah. to say. But having done a ton of research, hours and hours of research, I do not think the amount of meat that humans beings consume is at all sustainable. We can't keep this up so the that, way that's we, the we're argument. doing it. If we can't keep doing it, right. and we can't create a substitute, at what point... If the substitute is more sustainable and equally as delicious and probably cheaper because, listen, to keep a cow alive takes a lot of fucking water. Right. You got to like have this pasture nice, all this land. Sure. To keep a fake patty alive is nothing. So if it becomes cheaper, just as good, and they can get the health components equal. Never happen. You you say it will never happen. The health component will never happen. Because ah, it's because it's not natural. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it has that, to be like, natural. That, that shit they got at KFC. Think about how stupid this sounds. Plant-based chicken. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's wrong with us as a people? Like, yeah, that, why yeah. does that make sense to anybody? Oh, plant-based chicken. How? Yeah, Chickens yeah. are not made out of grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's impossible. So that's some GMO bullshit. So either right. way, it's GMO. Beyond Burgers, Impossible Burgers, it's all GMO bullshit. Right. You know how much shit they got to put in there for that shit to taste like meat? You know how much shit they got to put in there for that shit to taste like chicken? Yeah. So you better off just eating the regular shit. Right, but what if they're, what if we get to a point where the population density is so much that we can't supply it with chicken and meat and maybe chicken and meat and these types of things are reserved for like the super really, really rich. That's where it's headed. And it is kind of where it's headed, meat right? It should be extremely expensive. Right. And you should eat it on rare occasions. Cows should be extremely expensive. What's not chickens. Thing? Cause you chickens ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They're not going. Nowhere Literally. Fucking they way. can't fly. Right. And, um, they are built to be eaten. And, they, and really everybody should be eating more fish anyway. Like right. If your body is made of three-fourths of water, and we know that the earth is made of three-fourths of water. But there are not very much fish in the sea, and the factory Stop farming it. fish. Blame that on the Japanese. That's not true. Well, yeah, the Japanese are the worst. No, there's... Maybe the, fucking the, the, the fish them fishes, have, bro. The oceans fish. have been wildly depopulated of fish, and the factory farming, which is all these salmon in these facilities... GMO. That stuff is not good for you either. Tilapia, tilapia is not even a real fish. So right. I, that broke my heart. <laughs> that broke my heart. <laughs> they charge like that's a real not, fish. Even a real fish. not even a Isn't real fish. Isn't that crazy? Can Broccoli's you break not this a real down? Vegetable. Can you break down the tilapia thing? What tilapia is a is a what they made tilapia. It's like a, a hybrid between. Yeah, I forgot. Actually, I want to say a salmon week. and a. But whiting? does it swim? Yeah, it's a fish. Oh God, I thought it's that they fish. were just like. But it's a hybrid it's not an insect. I mean, it's a fish. No, not an insert. I thought that they were just like making the patty, and there was no head, no tail. Nah, no, you're no, not no. gonna go to you're not gonna go to the Caribbean and somebody pull a tilapia out the ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll pull out some mai mai. There's some grouper. They'll pull out some tuna, some grouper. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a ain't, ain't no, ain't no. Uh, uh, it's not a tilapia. pure breed. It's not a pure nah, breed. It's, it's not, not a pure breed. It's not a blue nose. By the way, this is why I love going to the islands. When you go to the islands, if they don't have it, they don't have it. They will right. tell you things aren't in season. Right. Yes. Season is the key. We got to start eating by season. That's it. Yeah, but motherfuckers want avocados in yeah, December. 
be able to walk into a, a, a supermarket and just no. be like, I Yo, want strawberries. It's not strawberry season. How crazy is this? Like, what kind of work? Like, how fucking fortunate are we that any time of year, if you want guacamole, you get guacamole. Right. Like, any time of year, yeah. you want uh, lettuce, you get lettuce. This was seasonal for the vast majority yes. of human existence. And it should go you back didn't get to that. blueberries until fucking October, buddy. If we do that, obesity rates will go down. Absolutely. America will start appreciating these yes. things more. Yes. Dude. You know what I'm saying? These things will be luxuries that yes. we treat. Like, yes. oh, strawberries and whatever time of year. I've been looking forward to getting mangoes in Taiwan all year. All year I've been looking forward when I went on my last trip. When I got there, it wasn't mango season. season. Hey, oh man. well. Hey, man. Oh well. Hey. I'll try you better again find you year. a Mexican on the street. Hey. Right. <laughs> then it's not the same. You said, I, I think I don't think that the oceans, I mean, it's all the ocean, but when you go to those islands, they treat their oceans a little bit different. I don't see them running out of lobster, bro. I don't see them running out of crayfish because they eat them during the season. Like when I was in Turks and Caicos last weekend, it was lobster season. Everywhere you, I mean, you jump in a regular car. Hey, you know, it's lobster season. Right. You're at the hotel. Hey, yeah, it's yeah. lobster season. Everything had lobster stuff on the menu. Lobster yeah. rolls, lobster uh, risotto, everything. Why? Because it was in season. Yeah. And it was like, get it while you can. It's in season. The biggest illusion when it comes to, uh, you know, like uh, luxury food is that lobster is expensive. The lobsters are cockroaches of the sea. Right. They, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. produce, we reproduce like, shrimp, like yeah. crazy. They actually should have no real value, but since we look at them as really expensive, they've been able to like maintain that shit. Because of red lobster. Because growing up, at least for me, <laughs> growing up, in the country, Red Lobster was five star dining. That was right. fine cuisine. Right, right, you take right, a girl right. to Red Lobster, it's on and popping, yo. That's what drug dealers did. Yeah, I'm pulling up the Red Lobster. I didn't know no better. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, Cheddar yeah. cheese biscuits, delicacy, Got delicacy to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Red Lobster just made it like some fancy. Like, this shit fancy, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick your lobster out that tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah lobster. Lobster. That I thought they just brought them from the back. Oh nah, they be uh-huh. in the tank. I mean, I don't know. I've never eaten one out the tank. I always say it, but I don't yeah, know if they yeah, actually yeah. bring me the one out the tank. Them shit just be in bondage. Them right. shit just be like, they do. it's S and M. Yeah, they just be tied up in the tank. I'm like, why do you got them tied up in the tank? We went to the uh, Taipei Fish Market when we were over there. Wild, wild. On your recommendation to get sushi, incredible or no? Incredible, but uh, you know, t- tanks bigger than this room filled with crabs. Tw- my daughter's a vegetarian now. She started crying in the middle. Of the she couldn't. Place. She couldn't handle it. It was insane. Well, don't take it to the zoo. Shit. <laughs> but they're not, eating, they're not eating the lion. The I mean, zoo is just, the zoo is worse. Uh, the zoo yes, is it sad. is, man. To me, the zoo, zoo is depressing. Yeah, the zoo is depressing, depressing as fuck. Yeah, the is. zoo is animal slavery. Yeah. If, right. I, was, if I gave a fuck, yeah. I'd be protesting but that the, shit. The, the yeah. fish market is genocide. <laughs> yeah. The fish market is straight up genocide. Yeah. <laughs> the slavery versus genocide. I don't know which is worse. Why? Because you're eating them? Cause they, you pluck the crab right out of the tank, and, and then just you get the sushi, shit. and it's fucking delicious. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Really? The Unreal. tuna noticeable difference with the tuna or what? I stuck with. Uh, I called somebody, and they were like, "Stick with the eel and the crab." That's 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 the ab- their thing. That's their thing. That's okay. the absolute freshest out here. Unbelievable. Unreal. The food couldn't have been that good if your daughter went vegan. She didn't even have it. Wow. She, refused she was to just eat. too triggered by that. Yeah, shit. she couldn't handle it. So how'd you eat? What'd you do? Rice, rice and yeah. vegetables the rest of the trip. Okay. And That's one thing Asians do better than most people. What, eat rice? Not give a fuck about animals. Yes. What do like, you mean? They but, cannot give a fuck about animals. Oh, you ain't never bro. been to the country, huh? <laughs> Let me tell you, you something. You ain't never been to South Carolina, Virginia, Alabama, Georgia. <laughs> Y'all ain't eating jellyfish out there. Shit, because we eating possums. And raccoons. But that's easy. That's, like, well, that's that's a tasty delicacy. That's bear nothing. shoulder. That bear shoulder is nothing. Jellyfish, lizard. There's nothing that Chinese people won't eat. Nothing. They're nothing. That's why they'll beat us all. That's why they'll outlive us all. There's nothing they won't eat. What's the life expectancy of a Chinese person? Thousand, thousand years. Thousand, two thousand, two thousand years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Son, there's nothing they won't eat. They, yeah. they will eat anything. You know how we have like picky eaters? That yeah. doesn't exist in China. Yeah, 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 I had yeah, chicken's yeah. feet on this last trip. Please, been doing that since a kid, man. Chicken Great. Feet. Chicken feet? Yes! I'm from South Carolina. Chicken feet. Chicken was feet. Delicious. What are you talking about? Delicious. Man, eating chicken feet, man. But jellyfish, you're not eating. Nah, I never had no jellyfish. A, le- a lizard just spread like that, like on the cross. You never nah, had never that? Had no lizard. They nah. will eat that yeah, shit. Yeah, gator. Uh, gator might have been the closest thing I had to eat in the lizard. Dude. Uh, like a f- uh, it, uh, dude, just just snake. Just, eat some snake. Yo, dude, snake. alligator, yeah, crocodile. Oh, gator's great. That's like chicken, right? No, it literally good. tastes no, similar really to chicken, good. right? Yes, alligator's and good. Apparently, they breed like crazy because they're lizards, like those crocodile farms or whatever, like that. That um, that's what we should be eating. 
It's kind of rough with the gators, though, man. Why? Because they've been alive so long. So you just feel like a piece of shit eating <laughs> eating something that's been alive that long just because you're hungry. I don't know. This motherfucker done lived how many years? 600? I don't know. And you're going to just kill them? I don't like, feel bad eh. at all. Animals, I don't have that thing with animals. I don't have that connection. Maybe some dogs, they're kind of cute and that kind of st- stuff. No, like, dogs are fucked up. I remember the time I seen one of my homeboys shoot a dog in the head because they used to fight pit bulls. Oh, boy. And this pit bull was like off. You know, he, he didn't couldn't win no more fights no more. Yeah. And so he just shot him in the head. And I remember no, my that's home, fucked up. I remember my homeboy saying, man, that boy, he going to have hard luck shooting that dog in the head like that. And yeah. He, he did. A, he had a pretty I, rough I don't life. like that fighting them. I don't like fighting a them. A pig that is kind smarter of than a dog, though. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, but you eat ribs every day. I you don't eat, eat pork. I don't eat pork. You don't eat pork anymore? Nah, I never oh, eat no, pork I, in 20 I eat pork if, if you care about dogs, you can't really eat pig because the, a pig is definitely smarter, more emotional, Yeah, but emotional, a pig isn't as, a, as attractive. Like, a pig doesn't look cute. Nah, little baby pigs are really cute. No, By the way, don't. I've They're never eaten hairy, dog disgusting. Yeah. on purpose. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I need dog. If somebody gave it to you and you ate that shit, if somebody, yes. if you ate that shit, you're like, that shit good as Dude, fuck. Dude, I've eaten horse. I've had horse. I've had horse. I've had horse. Easily have. I could eat any animal. I really could eat most animals as long as they were delicious. I'm just saying I don't have the same affinity for these fucking animals. I think it's a big crock of shit. We don't need all these animals. I think that you have you have cows, chickens, pig. Well, here's the thing, and I'm not smart enough to speak to this, but most of these animals serve a bigger purpose in this ecosystem. I don't buy that at all. Don't believe it. No, it's the truth. I don't believe it. Because don't have cows fart. It. Oh, well, closes the ozone layer. No, no, it order. opens it. It's bad for the it's ozone layer. Kill all the cows. Don't, we don't want them doing that. Kill all the cow. There were cow farts cause more erosion in the earth of the ozone layer than all the cars and shit combined. You know why y'all feel that way? This is why y'all feel that way about cows now. Why? Motherfuckers is turning vegan and because people are drinking almond milk because yeah. they know that cow milk is bad. So now y'all just you like, out of here, bro. Bye. That is See not you later. right. We out of here. <laughs> Give them to India. They love them. <laughs> That's God. That's God today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to get mighty fucking hot when that ozone layer gone. Mm. Talk to God yeah, about that. There's a hole in the ozone layer. It's the cows farted into yeah. it. But no, remember, they, they stopped so talking about it. Chick-fil-A been trying to save us <laughs> from the jump. They yeah, really might yeah, be yeah, onto yeah. it. Maybe yeah. Chick-fil-A really does have this close connection to God because they got us eating the Popeye sandwich. They really got us in chicken. Eat more chicken. Burgers aren't slapping like they used to. Name nah, a burger that's bro, been popping. When you get some real beef, when mm-hmm. you get some real meat, like mm-hmm. out of the country somewhere, then burgers still be slapping. Bro. Yeah, but it's not a national craze like you know, chicken is. Chicken is having a wave right now, bro. You know what I realized about burgers and chicken and all that shit? I don't like the fixings. Meaning like, I don't like sandwiches and shit. I don't like hamburger buns and all that. I want to get right to it. Like, I don't, I don't. I like think sandwiches are on the way out. I don't like them shit. Oh, I don't. I don't eat bread. Yeah, see, everyone's going to be doing that. They should. Yeah, the bread yeah. is poison. I don't like the buns. The none of that. Shit. You eat cardboard. I haven't the, had a sandwich in ten years. Don't eat the sandwich. Yeah. Don't eat none of that shit. You just eat the fucking meat and have some veggies. That's it. That's it. Now, that's that's how human bread, beings now, what, eat things. Now, now, what about when the bread is baked properly? It tastes good. That shit is but good. It's got to be a delicacy. Most gotta, things that I, taste I, good are horrible for you. Right. Most things that taste good are horrible for you. Nah. Name one thing that tastes good that's not bad for you. Fish, steak. Chicken, you know what they gotta put bread, on the fish? You yams. ever eat a fish with nothing on it? Yes. Yo, Actually, when you go I did to the that Caribbean, in Japan. It's pretty good. When you go to the Caribbean and they get that shit right out the ocean, they'll yeah. be like, yo, the water got salt in it. Throw a little butter on it if you want. Yeah. Some lemon juice. Then they fry that motherfucker up and eat, then it's good, but eat. they fry it. Nah, they boil it. And Angola, they, Angola, they just boil the lobster. You eat that shit. That shit is amazing. Nah, dude, Fresh lobster by ocean. itself is regular, bro. That's rags, dude. Lobster by itself. Nah. I need some butter on it. Not in the Caribbean, bro. I just had it. I just had it. In the Caribbean, when that shit come right out the, when they take it right out that trap, mm-hmm. ooh, shit, it's, 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 it's just seasoned so well by that water, man. The, the water is not seasoning anything, dude. Salt, it's salt water. No, dude. You don't want fucking lobster to taste like the ocean. Yes. When was the last time you took a bite of ocean and enjoyed That's it? That's when it's the best. Oh, yeah? You ever drink salt water by the glass? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's called that's called drowning. Right. <laughs> no, you know what tricked me out when I went to Turks and Caicos? What happened? I didn't know you could open your eyes underwater. Wow, dude. I had no idea. I'm wow, talking about without dude. goggles. Wow, I dude. did not know I could do that. What you I thought would happen? Because it's, it's just like... Uh, when what talk, did you really well, think was going to happen? When we talk about freedom, yeah. right? And we yeah. talk about like just rules and being taught certain things. Yeah. You just do that when you're in the water. If you don't got goggles on, you just like this. Not me. Me? I, listen, I don't know what made me do that shit. And I was just like, Yo, this water is so clear, I'm just going to open my eyes. And I was just like... I jumped back out and I was like I told my wife I was like I can see 
やでにしてさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさあさAll the time. The Without goggles. The ocean. He's Jamaican, bro. He's different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a water He's a water black. You're a land black. <laughs> Taylor, you open your eyes on the water? Depends where I'm at. If you're in Philly, you're like, nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> But if you're in the ocean, ocean, you'll open them up. Um, I Where'd just started doing that, actually. I was, I was scared, too. I was scared, too. I didn't know you <laughs> could. I never thought about it. And then my wife was like, it's not like it's chlorine in the water that's going to burn your fucking eyes. Yeah. But I thought the salt water would too. Salt gets you a little bit. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. Not at But all. But you have to understand, like, you guys have a little paranoia. You still wash your chicken. You know? Um, how do y'all... You still wash your chicken. You're a little bit paranoid about things that so you don't need to be paranoid about. Why? You're y'all talking about chicken. not eating chicken? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, clearly, if something's wrong with it that we shouldn't eat it, you might need to wash this motherfucker. <laughs> no, we're all talking- right? That's probably why y'all not eating that no, shit no, no more. We're eating it. What do you think we wash it with? What's that? What do you think we wash it with? It doesn't matter. It's a waste of time. No. Nah, you wash it's it with lemon It's not a waste of time. It spreads you know? salmonella. It spreads salmonella. Uh, salmonella. Uh, it does. Knock it off. Salmonella ain't never killed nobody. You got SARS, Listen. Chris. <laughs> How'd you get SARS? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if salmonella ain't never hurt nobody? All this shit we be running from don't hurt you? Salmonella. What's the shit in your ass? <laughs> what's the shit that spread of uh, E. coli? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Please, you need yeah, a little, get over it. You need a little bit of that to live. Yo, I'm I'm 100 with you. I think we exaggerate all this shit. Like, just get I, I over do it. Too. Just get over it. It's not a big deal. Like, stop caring about so many things. The environment, you don't need to care about that. I don't know about that one. <laughs> stop, get over it. It's uh, good. Yeah, We're gonna be yeah, good. You really that. care about the environment? Yo, you know what's so crazy about? It? Let's face some bills. Let's talk about that. Right. I want to talk about that for a second. Go ahead. Other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? I'll tell you who Postmates. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service. All year round. No more uh, trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will find that store and then deliver anything to you. Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. That's right. I said free, free. They're giving you $100 free to start your free deliveries. Download the app right now and use the code idiots. You don't get that hundred unless you use the code idiots. All right. $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. When you download Postmates, the app, get anything you need, anytime you need it, download Postmates and save with the code idiots. And we back. Now I want to talk about that for a second. I think that, um, I think if the earth rebels against us, there's nothing we can do about it. So if the earth is changing, Mm -hmm. I think that when you talk about we worry about things that we shouldn't worry about, I think we might be giving ourselves too much credit for what the earth may naturally be doing. That's literally what what everybody is saying that when they say global warming is bullshit, the The earth has been warm before and cold before, way before we had straws, way before we had airplanes, way before we had Hummers. It is this human arrogance that we think we can truly affect affect and change the entire existence of the world. What caused the last ice age? I have no idea. Using plastic bottles? Wasn't no recycling. Dinosaurs weren't recycling. That's what caused it. It's like, I'm not saying that we can't affect it a little bit. Maybe we are affecting a little bit, but you want to just, I can't drink out of a fucking plastic straw. You really think your plastic yeah. fucking straw is going to save the ice caps? You are out of your And by the way, it's a symbolic mind. step. It's making people aware. It's it's getting people conditioned to start thinking about this thing. Yeah. I, I, went, I went to Whole Foods dude. the other day. I got an iced coffee. I went to get a straw. There was no fucking straw. I was listen, pissed I, off. I, I'm pissed. pissed. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I can live without the straw because well, it's conditioning people to think that way. Those paper straws are so trash. Trash. Because oh, as soon as trash. you fake, take a couple of sips out of that shit, that shit just crumbles. That's doesn't, the worst. Like, it's the worst doesn't make it through a whole iced coffee. But my thing is simply this man you don't need a straw we don't know what the earth is doing and that shit may have nothing to do with us that's what i'm saying or it might i don't think i don't think we're you don't the think earth. 
three hundred years of industrialization has had an impact on Man, the environment. Chris, no. I'm be totally honest with you. I think Absolutely. that human beings are such a small part of what make this earth tick. Like, where I, the I, problem? So I believe that we are like, so. Where the, <laughs> yo, we're so insignificant. Bro. We're so insignificant, but it's man. hard for us to assume we're insignificant. So the people that really think we're affecting the whole world, they have this human arrogance. They're the most arrogant people. They're like, every time you smoke a cigarette, a giant hole opens up in the ozone layer, and we're all getting cancer. Really, dog, for one right. cigarette? Because I don't think really? people think about the scale of human consumption. I don't think people th think about the scale. It's the AC is in in this room right now. The AC is on in every room in this fucking country and in China and in India. I mean, yeah, when you take all that stuff together, all these people running AC, all these people having exhaust coming out of their cars, yeah. all these people, you can't go anywhere in the world and not order a steak now. They got, you know, like it's the scale God that bless. we're doing all this stuff at. God. Yeah, but I'm we're going to pay not, a price for that. I'm not going to ever, be, not gonna ever be ignorant and say that, you know, human beings may not be the cause for yeah. some of this shit. But I do think that the earth is just rebelling and there's nothing we can do about well, it. I the think earth it is going through change. Well, it's not you, rebelling you or this is the natural life cycle of the earth. And it refreshes it itself every couple billion years. Maybe it's time to get then, rid of the fucking parasites, no. which is us. And you know what? Some new parasites will come about and they'll fuck up some shit. And then it'll get rid of them. But this has been here a lot longer than us and will be here a lot longer after us so why don't we enjoy it while we got it motherfuckers act like dying yeah, we, we, can, we can enjoy it Look, eat you, some you said, steak use your you air conditioning a use a plastic straw I'll, I'll tell you one sacrifice I'll make what is that I'm alright with electric cars if I can only go 25 out, miles an hour I'm okay at taking 4 hours for me to get to Philadelphia I'm not you can't live with that no Chris, shut up. You guys can't do that? Dude. No, that's not what technology is about. Why Dude. would I go backwards? Like, we, they created certain things for us to get places you think, faster. You think that oil and gas is the only way that a car could run? You don't think there's any other way to use other no. technology? Sure it it's just the most efficient. This is what people don't realize about oil, right? Is that, like, this much oil right here, you take that much oil right here. I'm holding up one liter bottle of water. That much oil right here can power a 2,000-pound vehicle for 20 miles. Okay. 25 miles. Like, that is an alien like substance. By the way, I doubt You just we... can't match that power with anything else. And that's why we haven't replaced it. And the second we can match that power with solar or lunar Recycle or fucking plastic, whatever, right. whatever we get, we'll just use that thing. But until we can match the power, we're not going to do it. These oil companies are in the business of profit. If they could profit off of sun energy, they would. They just can't yet. Simple as that. Like the whole Elon Musk uh, electric car have, shit. They have no reason to. Th that's the, the thing. The gas and oil reason. business is booming. Be right. Yeah, because nothing else is as efficient. And once it became as, as efficient, they'll jump into it. Like the Elon Musk shit takes just as much oil. Like the electric cars we use now re require just as much oil to power the car. Right. It's the same amount of oil because you plug your car into an electric outlet. Where does that electric outlet get its energy from? It gets it from oil. That's how the fuck you create electricity right now. Mm -hmm. Now, the preparation for the Elon Musk shit for the Teslas is eventually maybe we could have solar panels that could power the car. Or turbines. Or turbines, whatever it is. So it's basically setting us up for when we do have an oil replacement, which is great. It's a more expensive version of the, getting rid of the straw. That's you're conditioning it. people. You're getting people to think. But that's the least we can do. Sure, we can. but you is... need to make the car dope for me to jump on board. The only reason people get a Tesla is so that you could drive itself. They don't right. get a Tesla because they're saving the environment. Yeah, salute to Tesla for that nice publicity stunt they did this week. Well, where they, they had the young man uh, looking like he was asleep at the wheel, and that Tesla was just That's driving fake. him safely. That shit, come on, man. Dude, I want the one where he's whacking come off on, on the wheel. <laughs> Alex, of course you think it's real. What? None of this shit is like that. She was a publicity stunt for fucking Tesla, bro. What are you talking about? The guy that was driving the car, mm -hmm. but he was asleep. He's like, like this. And somebody recorded them. Think about it, Alex. Just all of us. I mean, I know we live in an era of cameras. Yeah, yeah. But just, you just randomly caught that guy. Oh, no, no. He's saying that, yeah, he might have been asleep or he might not have been asleep, but it's it was specifically used by Tesla. I think I think Tesla might have set it up. I, I mean, got I, I got I a friend Tesla that I know like it. got a Tesla Why? that drives drunk <laughs> because he don't got to drive. He, I, he gets <laughs> pissed drunk and then he gets on his Tesla and the Tesla drive that shit home and it's like, ooh. We have a friend named Little Duvall who smokes weed and lets the Tesla drive all day long, all day Atlanta. But he would smoke weed and just drive a regular car. But People, no, but he let, he does that on purpose. He'll, mm -hmm. I've seen Duvall take his hat, <laughs> pull it over his head and just sleep and smoke and just yeah. be like this while the car is driving. Yep. By the way, those are great commercials for Tesla. Oh, the best. I saw that shit and I was like, why the fuck I don't know how Tesla? And if you drive Uber right now, be ready. I can drive to work in the morning? You don't got to drive let the car drive me and I can yeah. sleep? I get an extra hour of sleep? Dude, Roadhead and a Tesla? Light work. Now, I don't know what that is. Black men don't cheat. 
I'm married, man. Your wife can do it. I haven't had roadhead in so long. Roadhead. Yo, so that was the next thing I was thinking. <laughs> What? It's like roadkill. Only no, I know what it is. I just, <laughs> for your libido. It's reminiscent about the good old days. <laughs> so, so that was the other thing I was thinking, right? So like, you know, everybody's like, China's going to take over, right? There was a time where like Europe, there was a time where- China is taking over. China's going to take over. There was a time where like the Middle East was in charge. And then there was a time where, you know, uh, Europe was in charge. And now there's a time where America's in charge. And maybe China's time is next, right? China's time is now. Sure. Sure. China's buying up all Africa, damn near. Sure. China's buying up the Caribbean. Like, yeah. y'all, do, forget it. Y'all got to go outside the world and see what's going on. So, bro. I'm wondering if, like, this is a natural progression of, like, uh, hu- hu- humanity, right? Where it's like, when it's your time to be in charge, you grind, 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 right. grind, 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 grind your ass off. Like, when Europe was in charge, they were working their fucking ass off. They were colonizing the whole world. They were all about that money. How can we make more money? How can we grind? Kind of like what America's doing right now, right? It's like, how can we make more money? How can we grind? And then Europe went through this phase where it seems like right now where they've kind of fallen into socialism where where they're like, you know what? We grinded so hard and we forgot how important life was. Mm. And we forgot how important enjoying family is. And like, I think what often happens when you you get wealthy and maybe you could speak to this is like and I've seen the transition even with you like you've made a, a lot of money you've gotten a lot of success and then instead of turning into like some like monster that's like flaunting that you've kind of like turned into yourself you've you've invested in your mental health you've mm-hmm. invested in your family mm-hmm. you like it, and I think this is what happens culturally to societies too is like you reach this plateau and then you go oh shit I was working all this hard and I was forgetting the most important thing, which is family and friends. Well, and yeah, like I think money enjoying life. Yeah, that's why I really take the opinions of uh, the opinions of people who have money when they start to do certain things that they don't have to do. I take it more serious, you know, what I'm saying? because money <laughs> rewards you. Money rewards you the luxury of being able to take care of those type of things, mm-hmm. like whether it's your mental health, whether it's your physical health, whether it's other people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you want to empower empower people around you. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Or you just like, you know, you start getting into philanthropy more just because that is... You find out what life is about. Lu- you have the luxury to do that. Yeah, you realize like, how much can you fucking have? But that's why we look at billionaires like they're out of their fucking minds. Not saying that, that not, right. and by the way, not saying they shouldn't have that because they earned they it. They earned it. But, but Jesus you Christ. You missed out on life. You missed out on the most important thing of life. You Or you maybe. might be. Maybe you're doing well. Maybe. But maybe you missed out on the most important thing. He might talk to Jeff Bezos. He might tell us about fucking rocket ship head. And you'd be like, holy oh, shit. shit. <laughs> Fuck roadhead. Fuck roadhead. <laughs> Fuck fucking space. You should see her head bounce when she's Mars. on a ship. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so, so maybe the way I'm thinking about this is like, may, and, and you've, no, you've noticed the idea of socialism bubbling up in America, right? Bernie comes out, obviously the squad and all these people who are really embracing this idea of socialism. And, and maybe, maybe that's the natural trajectory. Like maybe that's where we're supposed to go. Maybe America's reason reaching this point where we, we had all this prosperity and we worked our fucking asses off. Americans work really fucking hard. And maybe we're going through this phase where we're like, Oh shit, is it worth it? Like the only way America ever have real socialism is if, you know, we, when we talk about freedoms, you know, being prohibited, and then people can't don't have the freedom to take advantage of this capitalist society the way they used to. Right. Other than that, this shit gonna always be a capitalist society. Why? Because a motherfucker can go out there and sell t shirts. We we like because a motherfucker can sell eggs, like whatever. I'm not talking about like get rid of capitalism. I think yeah. it's always there, and I think it's the driving force, right? But like, what I'm saying is maybe there ha- you maybe when a society ages to a certain point, they go through a transition. Right. And then they start realizing, oh shit, maybe we gotta take care of each other a little bit more. Oh shit, maybe the right thing to do is I'm make shocked sure we're, we're not right. there. No, may, and maybe we won't get there, maybe we will. But I'm not uh, what I'm saying is I'm I wouldn't be shocked if that's why these these uh you know, these socialism things are bubbling up and that's why socialism exists in Europe and and maybe it's our time. Maybe it's our time to embrace you. it. But I'm gonna tell you something. That shit not going to change until people in positions of power adopt that mentality. Or, as long as you got these capitalists that yeah. are in these positions of power yeah. that give a fuck about money, that's what America's going to give a fuck about. Or until we overthrow them. Because I think that's what often, often happens. I think Bro, like, we pussy. That shit ain't happening. Well, Why do I talk like here's that? Here's the thing. I, the reason it hasn't happened is because the billionaire class has been very good with giving poor people just enough. Right? I think the billionaire class basically goes, okay, we need to give them just enough so they don't revolt. We can't give them too much because we want to stay rich. Bro, motherfuckers is really poor out here, bro. Son, they're not poor enough to revolt, and they get poor enough to you revolt. Know why? We've seen it throughout history. You know, no, you know why? What? Because they're poor, 
but you can still feel rich. Exactly. There's still enough things That's what's going to stop it from feel, happening. Yes. Exactly. So what I'm saying is it, once they can't feel anything, once they don't have the phone or once they don't have the thing that makes them still feel rich, then the revolt happens. And the billionaires manage that. They basically go, okay, guys, we got their foot on their neck a little bit too much. We came up good, but right now- Motherfuckers are dying out there. They're getting pissed off, and they're really talking yeah. this socialism shit. But Inject some money into these like, motherfuckers. But this is what happened 100 years ago. I mean, the, the, you, you talk about socialism is bubbling now. Socialism's most popular period in America was 100 years ago. And what happened 100 years ago? They had to do antitrust. They broke it up. But you had bombings. No, no, but you but, had riots. But what I'm saying is, it's a reflection of the time, right? right. It was, it was. There's these these crazy companies that were completely monopolistic. Sure, and Vanderbilt, the, Hearst, all those guys, Rockefeller, all yeah. these motherfuckers, and they were and they were spreading the wealth gap so much that the poor were so poor that they were right. like, "Yo, we're not doing this no more. Right. You can keep us poor, right. but you're not going to keep us dead." Right. So, and I think that's what we're approaching right now. And if the billionaires don't come in and go, and cough up some of that bread, it's going to be taken but, no matter but what. The, the difference is the the thing that really drove it. 100 years ago were the unions, right? Like, right. if you go back and look at it, the unions were literally had guns and were fighting pitch battles against the company. Because I Pinkertons. want my motherfucking freedom. The unions, and you're not going to take away my freedom, bro. Now. The unions are done. So what's going to be the organizations that are going to harness this? Because well, right hey, now, it's just happen. a lot of different I'm, people I, feeling a certain way. It will happen. I think both yeah. of y'all are right. Um, but I think that the difference between America... I think we're America, saying the same thing in a way. Yeah, y'all saying the same thing. The difference between America and a lot of other places, America has a system for the poor. Meaning, like, even if you're poor, right. you can still... Get something to eat. It might be the worst shit, yeah. but you can still get something to eat. You can still have a place to stay. Mm. It might be a shitty ass place, but there's still something there. It's a there. different type of poor. It's a different type of poor. Yeah. It's not like rock bottom. You're Listen, right. if homeless people in America are not revolting, who is? Yo, uh, like for, if, if homeless people in America aren't revolting, who is? Akash said this to me. He's like, "Listen, I've, I've, I've in my own life, I've had money in terms of his family. His family's had money, and his family has been dirt poor." Right. In debt, zero. And we went to India. I'll never call myself poor. Right. There's a different level, level of poor. Of poor. Word up. You would and kill for a spot in a housing project. In absolutely. You'd fucking kill in a second. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So that's what I mean when I say America has a system in place for its poor. Yo, but and, and to and to be honest, like you were saying right there, those unions, they, they had us bombs, they had guns, they were ready to go. Right. And that's why these motherfuckers want to get on on some level I think that's why these motherfuckers want to get rid of our guns they shroud it in a we got to keep the kids safe we Definitely. got to do this all these billionaires Definitely. are the same people they don't even have a political ideology they just uh, I disagree with that. that's fair that's fair but let me just get the point out I think Buffett does they all these motherfuckers they got the same shit right they they just want control and if they're like let's get these guns out of here they know it's easier to implement whatever policy they want when they don't have to deal with you revolting like if you really want to put your foot on someone's neck it's easy to do when they don't got a gun. But if I got a gun, let me tell you where your foot is not going to go. You know what America respects? Money and violence. Click, click. That's it. That's it. That's it. And those two things go hand in That's hand. It. You're not going to find That's money it. without violence. You're not going to find violence without money. That's it. You want to make a real change? That's what it's going to be, baby. And you can do it without guns. No, you can't. Name one time in history there changes were made without guns. There was a mass stabbing today in America. Hong Kong. No, it wasn't look Hong Kong. At, look it was America. But look at what's happening in Hong Kong. That's all being done without guns. What are they doing? But they ain't not doing nothing. We'll they about to get bodied, bro. I seen them swag surfing, They about to get bodied. I seen them swag surfing. I seen a massive swag surfing happening. Um, home. That's it. Yeah. That's what I saw. Yeah, multiple people stabbed at a business in Tallahassee, Florida. Six people were taken to a hospital in Tallahassee. Because this dude went on a massive stabbing spree today like he's in London. It happened at Dyke Industries. Yep. If, if the school shooting situation doesn't change stuff in this country... Nothing uh, will. Nothing bro, will, we've man. seen... Chris, Andrew, yep. we've seen the worst of the worst. Right. Yep. <laughs> like we've seen 9-11. We've seen these massive school shootings. Like we've seen the worst of the worst. Bro, America ain't changing. It, it's you know what's it, gonna change America? What's that? God. Yeah. Mother Nature. Yeah. When one of these motherfucking category five touched down somewhere and stay for, you know, Two days and really fuck some shit up. Massive earthquake in L.A. That's the other thing people ain't talking about. Everybody looking at the hurricane, seeing how strong they are. Wait until the next massive hurricane uh, earthquake yeah. happens in L.A. and breaks California apart from motherfucking the United States. Like, we got some real shit that's about to happen in America in Yo, the next couple years. You can say years. Trump is the first step because 
a lot of people have felt their foot was on their neck. And Trump was like, yo, they got their foot on your neck. I could get their foot off your neck. And then all these people are like, all right, we'll vote for you. But those might be the people in who end up revolting. Because that's Trump the didn't revolt keep class. The that's the revolt yeah, class, yeah, yeah. and they could absolutely revolt against Trump. But as long as he keeps feeding them, they'll keep him at bay. But that class right there needs to be served. And once they feel, oh shit, the Republicans didn't serve me. Oh shit, the Democrats didn't serve me. Wait a minute, none of y'all are doing anything for me. By the way, oh no, click click. By the way, that's another example of fascism. Act like you give a fuck about the poor and disenfranchised. Act like you give a fuck about that's the law. That's an example of government. <laughs> There's every well, government. But, but does no, that. really, fascism. But they do that. But then they really cater to the rich motherfuckers. Of course. Yes. All these motherfuckers are playing this game, right? That's the thing. Like Trump just realized who did he needs to appeal to. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Democrats right now. All of a sudden, every Democrat cares about reparations. Where, where was that smoke two years hey, ago? Hey, Democrats, years ago, message, four to, years ago. message to all white liberals. Y'all better start giving a fuck about white liberals again. Because you see what happened in North Carolina. <laughs> right? What happened? What happened? They um they lost the, what was that? Uh, uh, Special election? Yeah, but it was for the House seat? Yeah, I didn't pay attention. Uh, something like that? Republicans uh won that. And like North Carolina's like, what, 80% white? If I'm not mistaken. Because all y'all talking about is reparations. You better give a fuck about white liberals Fake again. Karen, by the way. Fake Karen. Definitely like fake Karen. This is the most hilarious thing. That has, do you believe in reparations? They're not talking about it as much no more. They though. go like this. They go, uh, we believe in a conversation about reparations. No, yeah. in a conversation to learn about it. If that ain't the most, what is it, condescending Bullshit. Yeah, I mean, that's what HR 40 is. HR 40 is the study of reparations. We would like to study reparations I, to see. And, and, what do you need to study? I felt that Did way. Did black people get fucked over? Y'all need a research but committee no, about the, that? The research is actually not the fact that black people have been fucked over. How much have they been fucked over and what exactly would that number look like? Which could take motherfucking years. It's, it's, it's all BS at the end of the day. Son, it's, it is lip service to manipulate motherfuckers. I'm t- it's just, but... The reason I do like the reparations conversation is because it has to start with acknowledgement and it has to start with accountability. Like we talking about energy and we talking about the things that are going on in the earth and the earth rebelling. Like it starts with that. Like you have to hold yourself accountable. You have to acknowledge what's going on and try to make amends for it. That's all we can do. Even when it comes to like global warming and all that shit, we know we fucking the earth over. So we got to acknowledge it. We got to hold ourselves accountable and try to make amends for it in some way, shape or form. You want to, you want to really fuck over the rich. This is how you fuck over the rich. Don't allow them to keep their money in their don't allow them to keep their money in their investments without paying tax on it. Sure. And don't allow them to take loans against their their stocks and investments that are not taxed as well. Because that's how they keep their money. They essentially keep all their money, like Warren Buffett doesn't pay anything. He keeps all his money in Berkshire Hathaway, he pays himself a dollar a year. This sweet little goody two shoes guy, uh, mm-hmm. what, uh, uh, whatever, whatever his name is, Buffett, keeps all his money in Berkshire Hathaway. When he needs some money, he takes a loan against that. Do you pay taxes on loans? No, you don't. So he doesn't have to pay any fucking taxes, this guy. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm always torn about that because I do want to empower people. I do want to help people. That's the level playing field. That's yeah, let but, them but, play but, ball but, like us. But listen, those guys, I mean, they hustled, bro. They earned every motherfucking penny they Nobody's got. Nobody's taking away your money. What we're doing is making you operate on the same level as everyone else. Yeah. Right? It's if I have to pay taxes on the money I make, and I make good money. If I have to take, pay taxes on you that definitely money. definitely have to pay taxes. No, I agree with that. But they've created yeah, a yeah, yeah, separate yeah, yeah, yeah. economy. Billionaires yeah. have created a separate economy where they do not have to pay taxes. Yeah. Because they don't technically make money. They keep all their money in their stocks and investments, and you don't have to pay money on I that. I don't mind the investments thing if it's stuff like the Opportunity Zone legislation and they're investing back into That's the different. That's charity. I'm yes, talking about like- doing that, I'm not mad at it. It depends you, what the investment is. If you got all your money in Apple stock- Right? Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. all your money in Apple stock, right? And it's making money every single year, but you're not paying any taxes on that because, oh, I don't own that I, or I don't have that. What if I buy five? What if I got Apple stock mm-hmm. and I buy five million iPhones a year for people and give them out? Give them food. That's charity. Not iPhones. They don't want no fucking food. What, what makes you think niggas want to eat? This is the apple. <laughs> Remember when motherfucking Adam and the God told Adam and he don't touch the apple? This is the new That's apple. The Do apple. you realize that? That's the apple. This, we could write a whole new script right. about how this is the new apple. That's funny. And when the world is done, like I'm talking about when God pressure washes every fucking body, right? Yeah. And there's nothing left. And then it's just two humans yeah. who got to repopulate the earth. And God puts this phone up on a tree. And God says... 
Don't, don't touch me. it. Don't, don't look at your don't mention. Don't part. touch that fucking <laughs> phone. All right? That phone is the devil. Don't touch that phone. Let's see if she can resist that shit when that mm. shit start buzzing. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Because mm. you know it's going to be a woman. And she's going to go for it. Champagne Poppy looked at my story. Champagne Poppy will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Champagne Poppy is not going to be here no more. By the way, that's going to happen, people. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that. You're going to die one day, but eventually, this shit is getting wiped the fuck out. Yeah. I'm t it's only a matter of time. I don't know when. I don't know where. It's only a matter of time. It's the natural course of life. Mm -hmm. Period. So, so I'll deal with it. That you, you got, we have no choice. We're or dealing with so it right enjoy now. Enjoy it while it's here, man. I think we're in the beginning stages of Armageddon. I'm dead serious. And I do think Trump is the catalyst. What I, is Armageddon? The pressure wash. What does that mean? Um, just the beginning of the end. I really do feel that way. I feel like it's going to start with government. Um, I don't think America, I think eventually America is going to be toppled. As the, as the world's greatest nation. But just because you're toppled doesn't mean shit can't be good. Like, it's really good in Europe. America's not going for that. Now. You think we're egotistical? Yeah. You think these fucking motherfuckers that really run this shit mm -hmm. are going to want to not be number one? Right. Never happening. They'll never bow down to China. We owe China trillions of dollars and act like we the boss. Yeah. Fuck that. It's never happening. But we are the boss. Because if I owe you, if I owe you trillions of dollars, right, Charlamagne? Mm -hmm. But I got a gun and you don't, then I don't owe you anything. They got guns though. But they don't got a missile that can reach us. China? Yeah. They don't, Chris? I don't believe that shit. Mm -mm. I don't Bro, know. they make these. And they don't have hey, any. If I'm China, I'll put all the bombs in these motherfuckers <laughs> and ship them over. Oh, iPhone 11. We got something for them. Kaboom. Kaboom. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> as soon as you log into Instagram, there's a massive explosion. You'd be like, what the fuck is going on in America? Yeah, yeah. There's these yeah. explosions happening everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's all type of ways they can fuck us over. That's true. I don't they're know. just they're just screwed up like strategically. Like we have army bases around the world, right? If we need to get a pop and we could get a pop, and they don't have that. They're trying to get that, right? They're, they're trying to have influence in these different regions and every time they try to bust in we start a fucking coup and we don't let it happen I mean that's what Venezuela is right why would we start to ask clothing line <laughs> what are you talking about sometimes you I make money <laughs> sometimes you gotta make money why are they starting a coup huh? <laughs> <laughs> why did we do that Yeah, you know, for all you guys who are confused right now T.I. had a, a, a clothing line if you gotta explain it it wasn't funny I just you know keep it moving that's the story of my right, life fine. we'll just keep going. keep going it is what it is we gonna be alright we gonna be all right. I don't know, bro. You know how I know we're gonna be all right, Charlemagne? Because we got Boost Mobile. All right? See? We're relying on them goddamn phones again. Damn right. <laughs> and you See? get one of them nice tasty apples on a Boost Mobile. Support you from today's show comes from Boost Mobile. Switching to Boost Mobile gives you more. They're surprising people with more at every turn because Boost doesn't offer one great thing. It offers many great things like super reliable, super fast nationwide network and four lines for 100 a month with unlimited gigs for talk text i mean that's incredible and data for a hundred dollars a month four lines and you get four free lg stylo five phones for the whole family i mean i mean that's just insane that's incredible value listen it all comes with no annual service contracts you switch to boost mobile you get super reliable super fast nationwide network so that you can connect almost anywhere boost mobile the switch that gives you more offers and coverage not available everywhere free phone requires port in additional terms and conditions apply visit boostmobile.com or your nearest retailer for details i do want to keep screaming um that I am not looking forward to the 2020 election. And the reason I'm not looking forward to the 2020 election because I just feel like Democrats are being such pussies and such cowards because they're not addressing the elephant in the room, which is our democracy is compromised. And it's like when you talk to people, like I was having a conversation with Mayor Pete when he was on Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. and Mayor Pete said the same thing that Stacey Abrams said, even though Stacey Abrams has an initiative called Fair Fight 2020 where she's trying to raise awareness. But right. Mayor Pete said the reason Democrats don't want to you know, talk about the Russian interference. They don't want to talk about voter suppression. The reason they don't want to talk about Mitch McConnell block blocking the election security bill yeah. is because they don't want to discourage people from voting in 2020. So you would rather yeah. lie to the American people and tell them that it's all good when it's not, when that is what's really going to discourage them. What's mm. really going to discourage them is them going out again, voting, 
shit doesn't work out, and now they got to go back. If you tell them now, like, look, the truth of the matter is there, there was Russian interference. We've seen it in everything from the fucking Mueller report to the, 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 the last... Who was the guy that stepped down? Comey? I don't know if it was. No, it wasn't Comey. Comey. He just stepped down. The security advisor. Was Bolton? Bolton? It wasn't Bolton. I don't remember his fucking name. He stepped down a, a few months ago. But he stepped down because he, he told everybody, look, the Russians are interfering with our elections. And after he said that, he got the fuck out of there. Do you, do you know the, uh, so when I was in Russia, I was asking them, like, what is your perspective on, like, collusion and, like, Putin yeah. and that kind of stuff? And they think it's laughable. I don't know about, listen, I didn't say collusion. See, that's the, that's the, that's the trick. Right, you're I didn't say collusion. Yeah, yeah, I said yeah, there's yeah, Ru- yeah. Russian interference. Right, I didn't right. say collusion because, may- yo, for all we know, maybe Trump isn't aware. I highly doubt it, but maybe he isn't aware. Right, but right. when Mitch McConnell does something, like after getting that intel, in the week of that intel, they try to pass an election security bill, and he blocks it. That don't tell. That don't raise no red flags for nobody. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I'm not denying no it. red flags for nobody. I'm not denying. It. I'm just saying what the people that I spoke to there basically said. And they had no, uh, you know pony in the race if you will they're just like yeah we don't think that's even it's just not even like and these are not people who are like pro or anti-putin they're mm-hmm. just like no they just of course not i just don't like when democrats say we don't want to talk about it we don't want to say anything about it because we don't want to discourage people from voting are they saying that go listen to some breakfast club interviews I, that's what when i go on cnn i say the same thing over and over for a reason mm-hmm. it's cowardly you're actually admitting defeat. Man, people's like, well, we got to win in the landslide. All of them are saying that. It's not happening. You're not beating Donald Trump in a landslide. When, last, when is the last presidential election that's been a landslide? When I said it to Mayor Pete, Mayor Pete goes, oh, you know, 8%, 10% could be considered a landslide. No, that's not, it's not happening in 2020. So unless they pass some type of election security, yeah. this shit is a wrap. So I, I got I got invited to like a kind of dinner that, I don't know how I got invited, but they basically brought a lot of people in politics, political operatives together and people in podcasting. And it was a guy who had made a lot of money in podcasting and he was trying to uh, use his money towards working for that, mm-hmm. towards trying to figure out voter suppression yes. and voting rights and everything. And it was like this long, open conversation, a lot of smart people. And basically, like, the takeaway from it was it's a difficult thing to fix and address because ultimately it's a local issue, right? Like, it's a hard thing to fix on a national level because it all has to do with the voting practices, not even in the states, like in the in the counties or mm-hmm. the, and like you have to, and it's hard for, to even if you were able to raise the money and Stacey and Stacey Abrams was supposed to be on the board of this guy's uh, organization, and maybe she's doing her own thing now. Yeah, she has something called Fair Fight Twenty Twenty. It's just you got to start paying attention to local stuff. Like you got to really pay attention to like who's on your board of elections, who's your city councilman, who's because that's what it comes down to. It's not all coming from a federal or a even state level. It's all on the local level. I don't know if I believe. It. I, I agree with you, but I don't know if I, to- I totally believe it's not coming from a federal level either. Well, I think some of the, the energy- fact that they don't want no paper ballots in certain places. That's, oh, that's I think the they- energy's coming, but the actual laws that are putting in our place yeah. are local. I think as long as they can control shit digitally, we fucked. Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be like a scary election. For yeah, sure. it, 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 there is no election. Trump is here until 2000, and he dies. All right. So I got 2000. He dies when Trump who leaves. Are, who are obsessed with the fact that he has dementia and he's starting to fall apart and he won't make it to 2020. I don't really see it. But look, who dementia. knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But um, but yeah, I mean, we'll we will see what happens. Put it that way. All right, I think we're done here, guys. Almost two hours. Damn, we did it, baby. Anything else? No, I think it's good, man. Okay, guys. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Now, enjoy this great commercial from White Castles. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could make your favorite restaurant sliders at home? Well, problem meets solution. White Castle sliders are available at the grocery store. They're made with 100% beef patties on a bed of steam grilled onions and have that same one-of-a-kind taste that White Castle has been serving on their restaurants for years. Pick up some sliders from the grocery store and make it a slider night. Go to whitecastle.com slash idiots to get $1 off the purchase of any four or six pack of White Castle sliders. Thank you guys for listening. Peace. 